Welcome, everybody. The MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Glad You Asked. I mean, that is Dan O'Dowd's boat, boat there. Yeah, I got it in the picture. Thanks, guys, for getting my boat in the picture. <laughs> got, got the Stugats over there. Phillies at the Marlins as you have a pitching matchup with Spencer Howard taking on Pablo Lopez. As noon Eastern, the MLB Game of the Week is coming up. The Phillies and the Marlins doing battle in the National League East right now. The Phillies are just a game under 500. They're one and a half games out. The Marlins are just a half game back of them, 23 and 25. It's a really tightly contested division. The Mets atop it, but then it's Braves, Phillies, Marlins, and the Nationals. Just three games separate, first to fifth, and that's where this game is awfully important. Alongside Dan O'Dowd, I'm Adam Dan Burke. Good to have you with us as always. First off, Dan, love the relaxed look. I've never seen you. Did, song, well, you jacket, had my songs, boat. You had the boat in the picture. I thought I'd come out cash today. I love the look. Next time I'll see the boat shoes. It'll be good. Um, injuries have impacted both these rosters. You know this yeah. as a long-time president GM. When you are trying to reconstruct your roster, it's tough when injuries are depleting you. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been the story of the 2021 season. I've called a transaction fest this year. Yeah. You know, as a GM, you really, you're waking up. Last year, you woke up every day worrying about getting through COVID. As a manager in a GM this year, I don't think you, you almost can't get through a game anymore where you don't have injuries to deal with. It's a little bit more problematic for me uh, for the Phillies than Marlins for a simple reason. The Phillies have a top-loaded uh, payroll. Most of those players, two of them are four of their highest paid players on their team. So when you have such a large percentage of your payroll going to such a few amount of guys, they represent so much of your war value. When you lose them for injuries, the fall off is pretty dramatic on the rest of your roster. And those are awfully big names right now that both those teams are missing. Hopefully, get them back healthy and raring to go. In case you missed the highs from last night, let's take a look. Diaz will be the hitter. Son Diaz. Center field. Well hit. Herrera is going back, and he is there. He pulled it right off the top of the fence. What a play. Oh, Dubal Herrera just robbed Isan Diaz of a home run. A base hit should score two now. It is a base hit into right field. One run is in. Here comes the second, and Bernie comes through. Marlins take the lead of the eight. And so the Marlins win this game. Four to two is the final. We saw those brief highlights there, but the right. Phillies' defense, Dan, is awfully important. Yeah, I mean, the microcosm of their season for me and watching them play is what took place in the eighth inning on a ground ball to Brad Miller at third base. For me, it's a routine double play ball at a big league player needs to make. Scuffs the throw to second. Segura makes a great pick. It's that little time of the short pick that cost him a double play. And for me, if you look at the entire Philly season, they have been brutal defensively. There's no other way to put it. And then as a GM, many things drove me crazy. But the one thing that really drove me crazy is that when you have a team that doesn't make the routine play, forget about the extended plays. Yeah. I want the 6-3 to be a 6-3. I mm -hmm. want the 5-3 to be a 5-3. They just have not made the routine plays. The left side of their infield between DD and Baum have represented 14 errors. Yeah. I mean, it's just unacceptable. As good as their starting pitcher is, if they don't clean that up, they've got absolutely no chance to win this division. And Alec Bohm's a young player. I understand that. Perhaps some growing pains. But DD Gregorius is a veteran player. If you're not picking the ball at that position, Well, I got a decision to make on Alec Bohm. At some yeah. point in time, they're going to be faced with the decision of getting him out of here mm. so the game slows down a little bit for him, maybe sliding Segur over to third play, the young Maton at second base when DD's ready to come back. But they've got to start catching the ball. They've got to start putting outs away. Marlins rotation, when they look at run prevention, there's a reason why. If you're a Marlins fan, you're off excited beginning with their big three. Yeah, they're big three. Uh, Alcantara, um, Rogers, Rogers, and uh, the kid pitching today. I and mean, Lopez. Just in, in Lopez. 23, 25, 25. Yeah. They got other young guys behind them on the way in Sanchez Cabrera coming back from injury and Max Meyer. Mm -hmm. They should be so excited about their future. These three guys have dominated this year at the big league level. They all have improved from last year, and they've got more talent coming behind them. It's really the foundational piece, piece of this franchise yeah. to move forward. If they can figure the positional player thing out a little bit, the Marlins have a chance to be absolutely dominant in the years to come. As you've told me all along, club control is a big part of this. Payroll, Payroll flexibility. flexibility yeah. Controllable young talent. Yeah, and that's a huge part of this right now for the Marlins. All right, our poll question today, as you're building up this game to the Phillies and the Marlins, who will win today's game? Nice and simple. Phillies or the Marlins? It's Spencer Howard against Pablo Lopez. Howard over and won a 7.36 ERA in just seven and a third innings of work so far. And Lopez is one of three of the 2.73 ERA in 56 innings so far. 
We continue here the MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Glad You Asked. Lots more to come. Is under 25 minutes away from the Phillies and the Marlins, including Aaron Nola, the terrific starter for the Philadelphia Phillies, the ace of that staff. We will talk to him about his season so far and ask him the pivotal question, what's he better at than his brother, non-baseball activity? Sharply toward the hole, diving, stop, ball to his feet, throws to first in time. That was an excellent play by the six foot five inch Alec Bohm. Wow. Smokes one, and what a play by Reese Hoskins. Rodgers was looking for his first hit, and Reese Hoskins robbed him of it. That's full extension. Swinging the ground ball, deep short, diving to Reyes. He's got it. Hops up, long throw to first. Hoskins digs it out. He got him. Tremendous play, right? I, I didn't think he was going to have a chance to catch it, let alone get up and throw him out. And here's a swing and a drive down the left field line, and that one is going to be a fair ball and gone. And finally, number 100 for Reese Hoskins. And that's got to feel good to get that monkey off his back. No doubt about it. And it's 3 and 2 to Harper. And he lines it to right field. That's it for a base hit. One is in. Here comes McCutcheon. The throw to the plate by Chisholm. Not in time. Two run single for Harper. It's a seven run eighth inning. And the Phillies lead it eight to three. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Glad You Asked, a YouTube original series that examines timely questions around the impact of systemic racism on our communities and in our daily lives. All episodes are available right now to watch on YouTube for free. No subscription required. Head over to YouTube and just search Glad You Asked only on YouTube. And a pleasure to bring in Aaron Nola right now of the Philadelphia Phillies. Aaron, we'll get into the nitty gritty of your season so far, but just big picture, how has the season gone so far for you? Uh, for myself, kind of up and down. Uh, not too good of a May for me, but I'm kind of glad it's over. So we'll start fresh in June. But, uh, you know, we're, we're competing out there as a team. Um, you know, we've had some ups and downs, had uh, some guys hurt. Uh, so hopefully we get those guys back soon. But, you know, we're looking to uh, split the series here today against Miami. Hey, Aaron, it's Dan O'Dowd. I'm going to lighten the moment a little bit for you. So we're in the middle of the SEC tournament right now. We've got regionals coming up and then College World Series. So I got a chance to see you pitch uh, as a Tiger, but I want you to walk us through growing up a Tiger fan, getting to pitch to pack crowds at Alex Box Stadium. Can you tell us what that experience was like to you and what it's meant to you in your professional career? Well, I grew up right down the road from LSU, and I went to a lot of the games when, when Skip was – coaching over there and my brother went over there so I went to a lot of games and got to play with him uh, I was blessed to do that for one year um, but we went to regionals every year and and super regionals a couple of times at World Series one time um, but one of the most fun tournaments is SEC tournament I mean uh, you're out of school and you get to play baseball so it's kind of like we're doing right now but uh, it's just a good atmosphere over there in Hoover and uh, it, it's a fun time, and uh, to play in Alex Box Stadium, it was it's pretty amazing. I mean, the fans uh, get 10 to 12,000 pretty much every game, especially on the weekends. And once regionals, super regionals come, it's pretty live. Yeah, that atmosphere is always something special. Continuing the lighter theme, we always like a little pitcher on pitcher crime. Uh, the strike you had against Martin Perez, can you take us through that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't mean to hit the back foot. I tried to go for a back foot breaking ball, but uh, felt like uh, when he swung, his his back leg kind of flew out towards the plate. <laughs> hey, Aaron, the evolution of your changeup. I thought you had an above average changeup in college. I thought you got away from it a little bit at the beginning of the pro career to really focus on your your breaking ball, but now it's back. I mean, it is a devastating pitch. Did you change your grip on that? Did you do something to that to give it the effectiveness that it has right now? Uh, I changed the grip up a little bit. Um, I had college and first couple years of pro ball, I had a four-seam grip. Now I have a two-seam grip. Just uh, 
just messing around one day and it kind of felt smaller in my hand to have a two seam grip than a four seam grip and uh, I'm not on any of the seams because uh, I feel like I can try to get it a little bit slower like that uh, and then just try to kill my backside, uh, my back leg. So uh, just kind of, I mean, it's been a work in progress. Man. I feel like every year uh, I got to try to be more consistent with it and throw it a lot in spring training. And it's just, it's just a feel pitch. Speaking of feel, um, by the way, I think it's great. It's unbelievable. You think you have to keep working on it. Good for you. But speaking of feel, you know, we, every day you read about velo and spin rates and technology that helps tunneling. And yet when I watch you, I think of art. I think a guy on the mound that is prepared to compete against his opponent but makes adjustments based upon feel as the game goes along. So which kind of box do you fall in in today's game? Uh, I think, just like you said, uh, I feel like I have to prepare a lot. I'm not, gonna, I'm not a guy who's going to blow fastballs by you. Um, I can't go out there and throw 95 to 100, so I have to try to command all my pitches, all three of them, and, uh, you know, make big pitches when I need to. Uh, but I feel, like it's always a, I feel like it's always a grind out there, and uh, I really try to take my throwing sessions and bullpen seriously, kind of game-like, so... Um, I always believe creating good habits off the mound um, creates them on the mound. That's well said. And a guy who also has great habits is Joe Girardi. We had the pleasure of working with him here at MLB Network. And Joe's obviously a no-nonsense guy, loves baseball, loves the game. What's it been like pitching for a guy like Joe? It's awesome. I, lo I love playing for Joe. We all do. Uh, we all know what he's accomplished in his career. Uh, played a while. Just uh, He's an intense Intense person, intense manager, and uh, I think I think professional athletes need that. Um, but it's it's good it's good working under him. I know this has been a frustrating season for you guys. You know, on paper, you guys are an extremely talented team, but injuries have been decimating for you. It's been decimating across the entire industry from a player's perspective. And I haven't had a chance to ask a player this question yet. Why do you think we're seeing so many soft tissue injuries, Aaron, this year? Um, not sure. Maybe it's because of last year, only, only 60 games. Um, I, I know last year was kind of like a sprint, uh, not really a marathon type of season. Um, I mean, we're, what, already almost at that mark. But got a long season. I think, uh, I think to stay healthy, I know for myself, I have to really, you know, try to over-recover, you know, do, it, do, you know, that extra – recovery to stay healthy. Uh, I mean, that's what it's all about, uh, especially as a starting staff. We all want to stay healthy, uh, make every one of our starts. I feel like if we do that, um, we got a better chance of winning. So uh, I think throughout the board, I know we got we got several in injuries, uh, and I don't think they're, they're not really big, so hopefully the guys come back soon. It's so cool to see one person make the major leagues. It's really cool to see two brothers make the major leagues. Um, Non-baseball, what are you better than Austin at? <laughs> Dang, to be honest, I'm not really as, I'm not really better than him at much. <laughs> uh, we go back and forth in a lot of things. Um, ping pong, ping pong is one of them. You know, he'll say he's better than me, but uh, over the years I've – I've improved my game against him. You know what? John Smoltz says he's a better ping pong player than he is a pitcher, and he's a Hall of Fame pitcher. So the Nolas <laughs> and Smoltzy, we'll get some ping pong together. Uh, seriously, Aaron Nola, I really yeah. appreciate the time, man. Have a great rest of the season, and thanks again. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. It is time now for a creator spotlight and honestly, a guy who is a huge fan favorite, Jolly Olive. He goes by Jack. We're going to call him Jolly Olive. And listen, he's got eight to ten minutes of videos focusing on current MLB news as well as player-specific content considered forgotten in the sport. His favorite team is the Mets, and his favorite moment I'm going to ask him about, which is the 2015 NLDS Game 4 Mets at the Dodgers. And now, Jolly Olive, kind enough to join us right now. Jolly, listen. I see Mets fan, and I feel terrible. I just see the news here about Noah Syndergaard, the fact that he's going to be uh, delayed in his return. What is it like, a Mets fan this year in particular? Is the walking wounded out there? 
It's total whiplash because you're getting a whole new era of Mets baseball, but it's very reminiscent of the first season I watched in Mets baseball, which was 2009, where everyone got injured. So I'm used to it at this point, but it's definitely jarring for sure to see all these guys injured. Yeah, I, I, your favorite memory is NLDS 2015 Game 4, Dodgers-Mets, Kershaw versus Mats. Why is that a game that stands out to you? Well, it was the first playoff game I ever attended. Uh, it was in the middle of Daniel Murphy's home run barrage where he hit, I think, like a home run in seven games in a row. Uh, but it was also a surprise game for me because I was at school, high school senior that day, and uh, my dad texted me. He was like, hey, I hope you don't have plants tonight. We're going to the game. So it was like completely out of nowhere. I don't even think they won that game, but the atmosphere of playoff baseball at City Field was absolutely incredible. It's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. Uh, uh, there's Murphy, of course, man. Murph got that hit. What was your reaction there? Oh, and screaming at the top of my lungs. I lost my voice for at least two days, I think, because of all the screaming we did in that game. Yeah, I, I, uh, I don't blame you. For a good reason, you'd be excited. Forgotten <laughs> players. Um, this is such an interesting concept. How did you come upon this? Yeah, it's it's interesting because I was really into baseball cards when I was younger, and, I, you know, I'm still young, but... Uh, I basically became very in tune with a lot of the guys that weren't considered stars of the game by any means. So between baseball cards and video games, I had always had a huge space in my brain full of basically useless baseball knowledge until I tried to make it useful. Uh, my big philosophy for creating content was trying to find something that nobody else was doing. And I thought this would be perfect just because these were a lot of guys that nobody was talking about. And a lot of them did really cool things in the game, even if they're considered minor on a grand scale. So. That's sort of how I found the inspiration. Who was the one that you said, honestly, this needs to be known about this forgotten player. I want to go get a megaphone and tell everyone about this person. <laughs> Uh, the biggest one for me, and I'm really glad the video did well, was uh, the forgotten batting champion, which was Freddy Sanchez. Uh, Freddy Sanchez was one of my favorite players growing up. He played for some pretty bad Pirates teams, but he was always a really fun player to watch for me. He played my position when I was a kid, which was second base. And uh, Freddy actually saw the video that I made about him through his kid, I believe. Uh, and he was uh, uh, nice enough to send me a signed ball from the World Series and a signed ball from the All-Star game that he was in. So that was uh, amazing. Wow, that is epic. I mean, that's unbelievable. I thought you were going to give, like, you know, something from the dead ball era, you know, tinker to Evers a chance, something like that. Um, <laughs> nah, not too far back. <laughs> um, as far as the most viewed moment, something involving Ronald Acuna, if I'm not mistaken? It is, yep. And what was that moment? Uh, so it was, I made this towards the beginning of my channel, but it's basically the uh, sh uh, short-lived rivalry between uh, Ronald Acuna Jr. and the Marlins that seemed very one-sided for a long time. Uh, I think it, it happened when Ronald was hitting all those leadoff home runs and he was really making a name for himself in the league. And the team that he was tattooing the most was the, uh, the Miami Marlins. So I decided to uh, make a video sort of analyzing all the uh, minor, you know, uh, Syncrasies that were going on in the in the uh, in the beef as one-sided as it was and uh, people really took to it They uh, really enjoyed that video uh, I think the beef has cooled down thankfully because I don't want to see Acuna getting hit for just hitting home runs uh, But people are still watching that video today So if they didn't know about the beef before they know about it now Yeah, I no doubt about it and trade deadlines just want to ask you the other day I said I haven't even thought of the trade deadlines yet But you actually put a video if I'm not mistaken about the most uh, I guess the most recent video you had was about trade deadlines uh, smart of you, by the right. way, to get in front of the curve, because I think everyone out there starts to think of a trade deadline later in the year, but smart of you to kind of get out in front of it now. Yeah, and it's definitely a little bit uh, because I'm a Mets fan and I already have to think about trades because <laughs> everyone's injured. Uh, so it was actually, it, it kind of fed into that a little bit, but I, the trade deadline has been always really fascinating to me. I like that the trade deadline is bigger in baseball than pretty much any other sport. There's a lot of teams that kind of make or break their season at the July 31st mark. Uh, and I thought, you know, get, there's a lot of great candidates this year because there are a lot of teams that are either fringe or they need like one or two pieces to get to the next echelon. Uh, so there's a lot of guys to talk about. I may even make a part three. I've already made two parts so far, but I, the, all the comments are, hey, you should talk about this guy. Hey, what about this guy? So uh, people see, really seem to enjoy it. Trilogies are always risky. I vote for a part three as long as it's better than the Godfather part three, but I, I trust you on this. Yeah, I hope so. Last one, Jack. <laughs> How did you come up with Jolly Olive? Is this like a, a Popeye reference? Where are we going with this? 
first I've heard of Popeye reference, but uh, not quite. Uh, <laughs> it, it was just sort of, I knew I wanted to like make my channel theme green, and I was like, what's the easiest way I can get to that? Uh, Jolly Owl was a, a nickname I had in middle school, believe it or not, and uh, I had a lot of nicknames growing up, but that was the one that I always really enjoyed just because it was so out there and, and strange. And I thought it was just something that rolled off the tongue really well, so I decided to go with it. And uh, now we're, I think, like 18,000 subscribers in, so I don't think I can change it. Uh, but I still really like it. And I like being called Jolly. It's a good nickname. No, so. I love it. How did you, get, did you get the nickname? There has to be a reason why. Like, you, you were Jolly one day, you were laughing, or you're Glum, and then went the other way. Like, how does it all fit into this? It, it plays on my last name a little bit. Uh, so it's Oliver to Olive. Uh, uh, but I think the Jolly part comes from, I guess, just, you know, being a happy-go-lucky kid in middle school looking at all my baseball cards. <laughs> <laughs> we all need to find our passions and joys in life. I'm glad you have found yours. Jolly Olive, thanks for a few minutes. Thanks for having me, man. Great stuff there from Jolly Olive. In the meantime, Spencer Howard has not pitched much so far this season for Philadelphia Phillies, but he'll get the call against the Miami Marlins. We'll have more on this matchup, including Pablo Lopez. How many strikeouts will he get against the Phillies lineup? All that more is coming up here as we're getting you set. The MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Glad You Asked. Phillies and Marlins doing battle 3 fourth right now in the National League East. Gets it in. Harper stops oh. it. There's another one. That's another outfield assist for Adam Duvall. Lined and caught by Miggy Rowe. What a play at short. Rojas takes a hit away. Here comes a throw from Sierra. Gets to the plate. Picked by Lyle. And he applies the tag. You gotta be kidding me. What a throw by Sierra. And what a play on the back end by Sandy Leon. Castro deals. And Cooper sends one in the air left field. This one's hit deep. This one's gone. We're tied in the seventh. Garrett Cooper does it again. Payoff pitch coming. This is fly ball out to deep left center field. Garrett Cooper is the hero today. And some Marlins walk off winner. A big home run in last night's ball game. Tied it up. Tonight, the walk-off winner. For the Marlins, their second walk-off victory of the season. And boy, did they need this win. You're watching the MLB Game of the Week pregame show presented by Glad You Asked. It's time now for Picks to Click, presented by BetMGM. So this is always fun here to put Dan O'Dell on the spot. And, you know, maybe in years past. So whatever I pick, pick the other. <laughs> I was going to say, the level of confidence I think is always interesting here. So total run score in today's game, the over-under is seven. Now the under has hit in eight of the last ten Phillies road games. Over-under, seven. I'm going over. Okay, why is that? I think the Phillies are due. I mean, it's just some point in time you play the game of odds, MGM. Yeah. Odds. And I do believe the Phillies are due to actually score some runs here at some point in time. Today, for me, is the day. Seven's not a ton of runs here. No, exactly. In today's game, you know, looking at a 5-3 game, yeah. perhaps. Okay, we'll see. That's the over. Uh, strikeouts for Pablo Lopez, who is a part of those great young Marlins big three with Alcantara and Rogers. Over under a five and a half, six or more strikeouts in six of his ten strikes. Yeah, I'm going over. I mean, everybody's striking out, so it's that's not a reach for me. <laughs> the other part of it, too, is Philadelphia. They're second most in strikeouts in Major League Baseball. And this year. guy's changeup, it's just, it's unhittable. It's right. uh, one of the best changeups in the game. Yeah, behind only Tampa Bay, nobody strikes that well than the Phillies. You like Lopez's changeup, thus we're taking the over on five and a half strikeouts. How about outs? For Pablo Lopez, 17 and a half. Now that's around five and two thirds, you know, six yeah, I innings. I think he's going to go six, so I'm going to go over. Okay, so 18 plus out, six innings. He's done that in five of 10 starts this season. Yeah, 50 50. So, so we can see. So he does it half the time, and you look at his numbers. He matched his season best with seven innings in his last start versus the New York Mets. By the way, you mentioned that yeah, change. Yeah, look at that change. Look at the percentage. He throws that more than any other pitch that he has. That's stunning to me. It is. And in an era of velocity, if you've got a good changeup, you're going to get a lot of swings and misses. Yeah, I always think it's four seamer, then you get your off speeds, et cetera. The fact that changeup is the most, that's interesting. Which team will win the National League East? Boy, whoever has the least amount of injuries between now and the end of the year, I'm going to still stick with Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm not crazy about their bullpen. 
certainly Soroka going back on the DL brutal really hurt them but I mean you look at the rest of the clubs in this division and there's just so many question marks about the, every team the Mets are the favorite minus 115 it's crazy isn't it and then I'm you got just the gonna take the Atlanta because they've done it before and the Mets still haven't figured out how to win yet for me and uh, I don't know about the Mets health too from a long term standpoint you get plus money on the Braves too plus 200 I mean that's pretty good news I know that so that's why I went Braves. <laughs> I'm a gambling man don't you know that? <laughs> don't condescend to me Virk I know what I'm doing I'm sorry dude. I apologize no, I know I which really don't know what I'm doing I'm just trying to act like I know what I'm doing which division will have the NL pennant winner so which division will have the NL yeah I'm not going to go on a limb here I'm going to say NL West I think the two okay. best teams and maybe the two best teams in baseball reside in the NL West in the yeah. Dodgers and the Padres so I am sticking with the NL West. So, so NL West minus 130, safe pick there, plus 210 at least, plus 400 the NL Central. I just want to go back to Spencer Howard, by the way, because he's a top pitching prospect for them. He's pitching today, and you're telling me in an ideal world he would not be pushed into service here. This is a real issue. What happened last year? The minor leagues being real. Yeah, I mean, he's it's a problem within our game today, and the pandemic really hurt. This this young man has pitched only 40 innings at Double A. I just don't think he's ready. F- to pitch consistently well he'll have a few good starts but look at his velocity readings what that tells me and then when I look at this one he's coming out throwing as hard as he possibly can from a max effort so what does that tell you mentally he hasn't figured out how to make the adjustment to be a pitcher versus a thrower those are the th- kind of things that happen in a player development system that you learn at the minor league level how to trust your stuff without throwing as hard as you possibly can and I just the Phillies are in a box Velasquez has stepped up and actually been pretty good now in that fourth spot. Their top three mm-hmm. of Nola Wheeler has been an all-star. Unreal. Eflin, for me, has been an all-star. Yeah. It's just, you know, after that, it's been problematic. And it's a case for me, again, where the Phillies are, the top line of their club is very good. Mm-hmm. The depth of our organization is very bad. So, consequently, you end up rushing a player like this to the big league who has ability but doesn't have the experience yet where he should be at the big league level. He'll have that challenge against the Marlins today. I also want to touch on, just because we mentioned the NL East, news in case you're just joining us right now involving the New York Mets, as Noah Syndergaard is going to be shut down for another six weeks. I mean, this is a team right now that has been beset by calamitous injuries. And the fact that Syndergaard's now hurt, another six weeks pushing yeah, that back? Yeah, might not pitch this year. If, if I'm sure Sandy Alderson's a Hall of Fame baseball man for me. They couldn't go into this season in my mind, thinking he was going to help them at all. Whatever they got from him. Because I thought it would be back June, July. You're not thinking second half? No, I'm not. Coming off Tommy John's, we have this uh, thought process with the industry. As soon as you get Tommy John done, you're going to be fine. What we don't talk about with Tommy John are all the players that don't come back from Tommy John. And I had a number of players that never made it back anywhere close to what they were prior to the Tommy John surgery. So you could not go into this season thinking from a planning standpoint, a depth standpoint, that he was going to be a part of your rotation at some point in time. If that happened, oh, that was only going to make you that much better. So I feel more disappointed now for the player. He's a free agent at the end of the year. If he doesn't get a chance to get on the mound at all this year, that puts him in a precarious situation as he enters this offseason. And that certainly could be frustrating for the New York Mets overall. You mentioned Sandy Alderson. I mean, listen, earlier Jolly Olive was talking about the fact he's looking at the transactions and trade deadline because he wants to know who the Mets could bring in. With all the Mets injuries, how many moves can you really make to stabilize them? Yeah, you got to get your core players back healthy before you start figuring out how you're going to add or subtract players from your team. They just got to get back healthy if that's going to be possible this year. More on the Phillies and the Marlins. We talked about the Marlins pitching. Did not mention actually their offense. What about a guy like Jesus Aguilar found his stroke again after having a big year before? They did, but, you know, it's funny, Adnan. Individually, they have some players having really good year. Eric Cooper. Yeah. Eric Cooper. Adam but, Ball. You know, Corey Dickerson's yes. performing well. Chaz Chisholm has made a real yes. impact at the big league level. Mm-hmm. But it's weird because when you put it all together, they don't score runs. Yeah. Losing Marte, he's out in rehab now. Getting yes. him back is going to be crucial. You know, the Marlins could be the sleeper team at the deadline. They have the kind of starting pitching, and their closer has been lights out for mm-hmm. them this year. Mm-hmm. Maybe they can be one that adds a bat into this mix that puts them in a position of having an opportunity to potentially win this division. Interesting point. We can mention Jazz Chisholm, by the way, two for three before leaving Tuesday's game, rolled his ankle. He got John Birdie starting a third. 
Poll results, by the way, just for this game today, got the Phillies winning 67%. Yeah, I do too. You know, again, just playing the odds. The Phillies have been so horrendous on the road so far, and their talent is so good that at some point in time, you feel like they're going to start winning a few more games on the road. One other nugget I want to throw at you. Phillies outfielders not named Bryce Harper. 202 average, 645 OPS. That's yeah, glaring. Yeah, I mean, again, it's, it's, it's an incomplete team at this point in time, but when you lose Rio Muto and you lose Harper, Man, you really are going to have a tough time putting up points because their offense is kind of built around those guys. Off to go see your son play at Vanderbilt. You excited? Not playing a whole lot yet. Maybe next year. Very excited. But SEC, you're going to be using But I'm going to go down and watch the games in Hoover this week, and I'm really excited. Look forward to seeing Dan's insight when it comes to draft, as always. For Dan O'Dowd, I'm Adnan Brook. Phillies and the Marlins coming up right here on YouTube. Enjoy the game, everybody. Look at this. Can we call the game from this exact spot? Lunchtime in South Florida, or maybe breakfast for the late wake up crowd. And this ballpark barely rested from last night to today's 12 10 Eastern first pitch. Tight games in this series. One more to go for a global audience. This is the MLB Game of the Week, live on YouTube, presented by Glad You Asked. We're in South Florida to put a lid on a four gamer between the Philadelphia Phillies and the Miami Marlins. At Lone Depot Park, I'm Scott Braun along with two of my very good friends, Dan Plesak right here. And Cliff Floyd is actually in the studio, just distance for <laughs> us. You get your own room, Cliff. Yeah. And I'll start off with two trivia questions. Just raise your hand if you were the first Marlins player to ever have your own bobblehead at a game. Go ahead. There we go. Okay. Now, okay. raise your hand if you were the last Phillies pitcher <laughs> to close out Veterans Stadium. Okay, good. <laughs> Just wanted to go over some resume action. Uh, and now we can begin to this global audience on YouTube. We are streaming live. It's free. YouTube.com slash MLB. We're on MLB's YouTube channel, which features almost 3 million subscribers. In fact, we might hit the magic number today. Someone might click subscribe and be number 3 million on the channel. We do all kinds of amazing things here. We'll chat with players during the game, mic'd up content on the field. It's gold. Many other special features coming your way. And let's start with the visiting team on this matchup. Nine consecutive non-winning seasons for Philadelphia. They've been spending big and trying to wipe that away. MVPs like McCutcheon and Harper. And then a little pitching. Zach Wheeler signed away from the Mets. Look at the chunk of change it took to get all of these guys, including JT Real Muto. They re-signed D.D. Gregorius as well. Two years, 28 million bucks. The payroll is north of 200 million this season, Dan. The Philly Fanatics priceless, by the way. Yeah, and managing general partner John Middleton literally sold the shirt off the Fanatics' back to put this <laughs> team together. It hasn't been for a lack of effort, though. You're right. And, hey, right now, McCutcheon's out today. Bryce Harper is on the injured list. So, so is JT Real Muto. So who's going to step up for this team? I think right now it's going to have to be Reese Hoskins. And he's starting to hit the ball to all fields as of late. You look at the numbers, Scott, and they're not indicative of a guy that's seeing the ball better. You see since April 27th, only two home runs. But he's starting to make better contact. Hit a big home run in the Phillies 2-0 win when Vince Velasquez pitched very well. He's starting to hit the ball to right and right center field. When he gets the occasional ball on the other third of breaking ball, he'll pull it for a home run. They need Reese Hoskins in the worst way to get going. When he debuted in August of 2017, he hit 11 homers in his first 18 games. Look at his NL ranks since his debut. The work has been there. We've seen a little change to his hitting profile this year. Less walks, more strikeouts. He had more power in April than we've seen in May, but he did homer in this series. So he'll help support that luxury bell. And for the Marlins, <laughs> they're one of the lowest payroll teams in Major League Baseball. Yet, Cliff, they're keeping up. They'll go against Spencer Howard, but they will be throwing Pablo Lopez on the mound today, who loves the home cooking. He's a really nice guy, but then he's not a fun A-B. No, you're absolutely right, Scott. And I think the biggest thing with, with Pablo, he's made some major strides. Just sort of defining his repertoire, understanding what he needs to do to be a good quality pitcher in this league. And when you look at his changeup and some of the things he's been able to do as far as making sure he gets longevity, 
you know, out of, out of his outings, making sure that he understands uh, what he has to do consistently to get these big league hitters out, especially guys like Reese Hoskins, is, you know, keep these guys off balance. I've always felt that when you look at the fastball change of combination, it works. It really keeps guys off balance. And this is going to sort of lean into what I'm talking about. You see his fastball against lefties. You know, getting in on a guy like Josh Bell is not easy to do. Brandon Bell right here, he jams him, gets him off him. But you have to be able to have the change up in your sort of secondary pitches to sort of get your fastball where you need to be. You can't be a fastball type of guy all the time. So you see the box move over a little bit. That ball right there is running in on a hitter that is looking and trying, trying to cheat. A guy like Paul Goldschmidt, you're not going to get him out consistently if you're a one-dimensional pitcher. you got to get in those hands. And a guy like Barnes, a really good hitter, also showing quick to the baseball. Pablo has done a terrific job of keeping the guys off balance, utilizing his, his changeup. And when you talk about this rotation and, and talking about length and longevity, not just this year, but long term, Pablo Lopez is going to be in a mix because he's learning how to pitch. His ERA is going down from 2019 when it was over five, and now he's around two, two, seven. That is him understanding what he has to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm down there watching these guys. It's going to be fun to watch. StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud showing us all the strikeouts with the changeup. His changeup usage second highest in Major League Baseball to Lucas Giolito. So we'll see those two on the mound. There are some big names missing for both sides. And for more on documenting that, let's send it over to Christina DiNicola, fourth member of our crew. And she is in Miami at the ballpark. Christina? Thanks, Scott. I'm here at Lone Depot Park where the injury depleted Marlins hope to get a big reinforcement this weekend when they begin a three-city trip in Boston. Center fielder Starling Marte began a rehab assignment with AAA Jacksonville on Tuesday, where he played two games. Now, at the time of the injury, he had started all 15 games in center and had moved toward the top of the lineup because of his production. In his absence, the Marlins have gone with four different center fielders, and none have stuck. They were so desperate for production that they even turned to Adam Duvall with just one inning of experience. Needless to say, the Marlins will welcome Marte Glad. Back to you, Scott. Pablo Lopez loves the home cooking. He loves his changeup, too, and he's on the mound for the world to see. Live on YouTube, lineups in first pitch from Miami on the way. Wheeler with the one-two pitch. Swing at a mess. He struck him out. Strikeout number one with Wheeler. Zach Wheeler pretty impressively strikes out the side. One, two, three, go the Marlins. Oh, that ball's crushed deep to right field. Going back on it is Duvall. It is up the top of the wall. Sierra is there to back it up, and Wheeler's in the second base with his second double of the year. And he delivers. A little tapper back to the mound. Wheeler's got it. Throws to first. And it's <laughs> Take that, Reese. <laughs> Wheeler's already got a strikeout. Swing and a miss. 98. 2-2 is lined the other way, a base hit for Wheeler. Working the count with a second straight at bat, and that puts runners on first and second with two men down. Man, not all that different from what his normal ratios are. Oof. There's a slider. That's 10 strikeouts for Zach Wheeler. Swing and a miss. Take a little off. Yeah, he did. A curveball for the 11th strikeout today for Zach Wheeler. Swing and a miss. That matches his career high. 12 strikeouts for Wheeler. This is the MLB Game of the Week, live on YouTube, presented by Glad You Asked. Today, we're at Lone Depot Park. Marlins, Phillies, wrapping up a four-game series. The Marlins have taken two of the first three. There it is. Roof is closed for a fourth consecutive day. I know the windows were open yesterday. We'll check with Christina later on what it's like at the ballpark. Sixth season for Don Mattingly running the Miami Marlins, and he actually goes up against Joe Girardi, who runs the Phillies. But Girardi is the one who actually took the Yankees job back in 2008. Second place for that job was Don Mattingly. These two have many connections, of course. Donnie, a Yankee, an MVP, and Joe winning a World Series. 
with the Yanks. And more on those managers in a bit. Joe's lineup card is presented by Glad You Asked. Here's the Phillies. Switch hitting Roman Quinn getting his first start this season in left field. Brad Miller, fourth position in four days. He's at second. Reese Hoskins had the huge homer a couple days ago in a win for the Phils. And he's had a five-game hit streak. Odubel Herrera in the cleanup spot for the second time in his career. Bone back in the lineup today. Matt Joyce gets the start right. Ronald Torres has had good numbers against the Marlins this year. Rafael Marchand makes the start, and he'll catch Spencer Howard. But first on the mound for the Marlins, it's the great Pablo Lopez. Uh, you know what? One of the things that sticks out, he has a tremendous changeup. We talked to manager Don Mattingly before the game, and he lo he likes the usage of the changeup. He just doesn't want him to fall in love with it. You take a look at his season, that fine ERA of 2.73. I think more importantly, you see the walks, the strikeouts is good. Less hits than innings pitch, and he's one of the main reasons why. Look at that home ERA for Pablo. 0.61 at home, so home cooking fits Pablo just fine. It gets me thinking about tonight's, or today's odds, courtesy of BetMGM. So six and a half is the line. Hey, it makes sense. When Pablo Lopez is doing what he's doing at home, I don't know. Maybe you're going under that mark. <laughs> this is a pretty big series, too. This National League East got us pretty well bunched up. The Marlins are in second place, tied with the Braves a game and a half out of first place. And the Phillies are only two games back. But when you look at this Marlins team, they might be better situated pitching-wise than any of the other teams in the East. They're healthy. They're, they're hoping to get Sixto Sanchez back before the end of the season. So they should get better on the mound also. Let's play ball in Miami. Pablo Lopez starts Roman Quinn with a strike on the outside corner. It's the Phillies matching up with the Marlins. Scott Braun, Dan Plesak, Cliff Floyd, and Christina DiNicola. Quinn five for his last 11. And he is lightning fast, Cliff. In fact, top three, I would say, in Major League Baseball. And if you look at sprint speed, he's usually up there. Well, so big for him. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just getting his opportunity and taking advantage of it, fellas. And, and that's what it boils down to for these guys, especially a guy like Quinn um, being a good table setter for this team. When you're missing star players like Bryce Harper, guys like Quinn have to get on base uh, and cause some havoc on the base pass. Quinn went two for three yesterday. And the count's two and two. Let's get to our pitcher breakdown presented by Glad You Asked. Pablo Lopez, what's he all about, Dan? Well, he's all about, he has a terrific changeup, and he's not afraid to use it. Changeup is the key. Fastball command, that sets up that changeup. And home sweet home, we touched on it. 0-6-1 ERA, he loves pitching in Miami. His overall ERA just keeps getting better. He's had 2-7-3 this season. Last year, a team high 11 starts and a career best 3-6-1 mark. So the numbers keep improving. He keeps upping the changeup usage. Two earned runs or fewer in eight of ten starts this season. This is a great at bat by Quinn. This is exactly what you want if you Joe Girardi and the Phillies. Um, you know, a guy that's giving you a look for everybody else in the rest of the lineup. 3-2 on its way home. Right side, that's a fair ball. A hurry. Diaz tossing to Lopez, got him. Beat him by maybe a step. Roman Quinn never thinks he's out with that speed. <laughs> Should we review this one? Oh, you have to. Hey, Quinn's walking back to the beam, walking back to the dugout. <laughs> yeah, that's one Paco Lopez there needs to do a little bit better job. I don't want to say he fell asleep at the wheel, but uh, made it awful closer at first base. Oh, he's out. Wait. Let's get a look. Break it down, Cliff. Well, you see Quinn's out the box, but Pablo is late to Dan's point. Man, that was really close. Pablo made up for, you know, maybe a little mental lapse by getting over there. I don't know. Ooh. You got to check. I'm checking that one from Joe. Hmm. They don't, and if Quinn goes to check himself, he might not be pleased yeah. with the result on the replay. And that was easy look too. That was our first look at it. Now it's Brad Miller, seven for his last 17, starting at second base today, and connecting shallow center field. It's Magnary Sierra for out number two. 
So let's show you the Marlins defense presented by Glad You Asked. Sierra's in the outfield playing center. Duvall on one side, and he's great. Dickerson on the other. Shortstop Miguel Rojas, really the captain of the team, and he's playing on the left side with John Birdie in the infield. Isan Diaz and Lewin Diaz on the right side. Lewin just called up today. Lopez playing catch with Sandy Leon. And number three hitter Reese Hoskins about to dig in. Dan, do you think they should have challenged that call, though, for Quinn? Yeah, that was pretty close. I mean, that, that's about as bang-bang as it gets. Uh, this guy stepping in the box right here, Reese Hoskins. With Bryce Harper out of the lineup, McCutcheon getting the day off today. This is a big part, big bat in the lineup. Phillies feel pretty good, though. The last week to 10 days, Scott, he's starting to swing the bat a lot better. You see on the year with 10 home runs, but he's starting to spray the ball around a little bit better around the diamond. And he's a big part of where the Phillies are going. He's changed his game a bit, too. Less walks, a bit less passive this season, and yeah. more aggressive. It's helped him out, Scotty. That's a good point because, you know, he was he was basically a guy that, you know, he had to be exactly what he wanted to swing the bat. And that's just not going to get it done. He's too good of a hitter uh, to be that passive. But you see the numbers right there. They don't lie. Uh, and when he puts the, when, when he's swinging the bat, he has such a good eye. I, you know, um, you know, he has just a good eye as far as, you know, knowing he wants to do when he's in the box. And he has to sort of expand when he needs to. So he's been really good this year, and it's good to see for, for, for a guy like Reese. Had a big swing of the bat on Tuesdays. Phillies 2 0 win, hit a solo, a two run bomb. Very well pitched game by Vince Velasquez on Tuesday night. This is a big one for the Phillies. They've already lost two of the first three of this yeah. series. They'd like to get out of here with a split, Scott. That home run on Tuesday for Reese was off a 1 2 pitch. I'm rounding up, Paul Severino. I know you're watching. 100 miles an hour, I'll call it, on a fastball up from Sandy Alcantara 410 feet and Reese Hoskins doesn't always show a ton of emotion on the field he was fired up <laughs> turned to the dugout and said let's go boys and he swings through on the 2 2 Pablo Lopez and that change up three up three down to start the day for the man who loves pitching at home. Sandy gets the strikeout of McCutcheon, his first of the night. One away, one and two on Hoskins. Swing and a miss, and that'll do it. Couple of strikeouts in the inning. Beats him with the fastball up. Sandy with the strikeout. He's got four through two. So it's actually Zach Wheeler who's going to take the at bat right here. Swing and a miss, and Sandy's got five strikeouts the first time through the order. Here's Andrew McCutcheon. There's a swing and a miss. He tied him up with a changeup. Go to a swing and a miss. He ran that one in, and he's got another K. Sandy ready to do it again. Coming to nap. And the swing and a miss dials up 99. One, two to Mayton. A swing and a miss. That's nine for Alcantara. Sandy on his game. Whether it's the changeup down or the four seam fastball up, able to execute, continue, keep these Phillies off balance. Two mile an hour fastball. Holding that velo throughout the entire start. Two to the Hoskins, a broken bat, and it's lined softly to third. Anderson's got it through six innings with a two hit shutout. A scoreless top of the first. Now time to introduce you to Don Mattingly's starting lineup presented by Glad You Ask. The home team, the Miami Marlins with Magnier Sierra leading the way. Miguel Rojas back in the lineup today in the two spot. Dickerson three, Duvall four. And look at the power he's had since the beginning of last season. Lewin Diaz in the lineup today and just called up this afternoon. Sande Leon will catch. Isan Diaz is playing second base, batting seventh. John Birdie with a big knock yesterday for the Marlins in the eighth. And Pablo Lopez, the pitcher in the nine spot. And the opposing pitcher on Philadelphia, Spencer Howard making his second start of the season, coming off an interesting, I would say, weird outing on Saturday. Uh, he has, you know, his veal. He's, he's started out the game 95 to 97 miles an hour, big, strong guy. Uh, 
Four, 45th overall pick in the 2017 draft out of Cal Poly. Interesting story. Didn't even have a scholarship. Uh, walked his way onto the baseball team, and a couple years later, found himself. The Phillies select him 45th overall. Velo is good. Good breaking ball to go along with it. Like a lot of young pitchers, I don't want to say rush through the system, but with the COVID strike, the COVID shortened season last year of 2020, made his debut against the Braves. Big time fastball. A little bit of concern. He hasn't been able to maintain or hold that velo in his last start against the Red Sox. Came out of the gates blowing pretty good. And then fourth, third, fourth inning, Scott, did a two, three mile an hour dip in the velo. 1 1 to Sierra. Yeah. A ball and two strikes. Yeah, so Dan. 95.3 miles an hour in his first two innings in that last start. Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud as we show you the arsenal. A lot of four-seam fastballs this year. He's up to that. But the problem you're referring to is in the third inning, which was eventually his final inning, 92.9 miles an hour, actually removed in the fourth, but couldn't do much against the Boston lineup after the first couple frames. Oh, what nice a catch. catch. See? That's why you bring your gloves to the game. There's always a big debate about the age limit for allowing a glove in the ballpark. But do you guys care about that? Absolutely not. I mean, no, I, you know what? If you're going to pay and you're going to go watch a ball game, get a chance, I had rather catch one with a glove than take one in the hand and possibly <laughs> break my hand. I know if a foul ball is coming my way, I'd rather have a guy in front of me with a glove on than trying to barehand it. There it is. There's a good look at it. That's an old school glove oh, yeah. right there, too. I think he made that one himself. Look at that glove right there. That that one's that that glove has some wear and tear on it. <laughs> <laughs> Swing and a miss. Spencer Howard picks up a strikeout. Yeah, that guy's got your back. You can tell. Catch probability probably about 12 percent on that snag. All right, let's take a look at Spencer Howard. Big, strong guy. 6'3", 205 pounds. Needs to harness his emotions. He's a guy that comes out guns a blazing. First pitch strikes are the key to keep that pitch count down and. Be mindful of base runners with a lot of young pitchers. There's some speed in this Marlins lineup. Pay attention to the Marlins when they get on base. Your pitcher breakdown presented by Glad You Asked. He started off on fire, like I mentioned, on Saturday against a really good Red Sox lineup. He struck out four of the first six batters faced. Here's Miguel Rojas, over 400 against the Phillies since the start of last year. Big home road, sp road splits, too. 329 hitter this year at home, 225 on the road. There's a strike. He's been so valuable for this Marlins team, fellas. I think when you when you, when when they had Jazz Chisholm go down, Manly inserted him to the leadoff spot, and he just he just kept going. And you know he he's such a a good hitter as far as understanding the strike zone. He's gotten better each year. Cliff, can they name him captain? I know he, there's not an official title there, but I feel like with Derek Jeter as the CEO of the team, it would just be fitting. Mickey, Mickey Rose been there for a while. He's the guy. I mean, yeah, they can. I, I, you know, you, you, you wonder how they go about that, but, I mean, he is the guy. You know, he comes to the park ready to work every single day. Um, all the guys love him. He keeps everybody head up. And that, he's one of the reasons they are game on the fire honey and playing better baseball. I'm telling you, uh, the Marlins are here for a long time, and he's a big part of it. Jandam going to be a tough play at short, and the throw is on time. Ronald Torres with a throw on the run for the out. You can see why right there, why the Phillies really like Spencer Howard. That's a good fastball, and a guy that Rojas that can turn on the heater pretty good. This ball eats him up here. You touched on a nice play, too, by Reese Hoskins. See Torres, he goes into the hole right here. Knows that he doesn't have a whole lot of time backhand and throw across his body on the money. One of the things the Phillies need to do is tighten up the defense. It hurt him again last night, Scott. Uh, eighth inning last night, a double play that wasn't turned led to what started to be a big inning. A pass ball also hurt. They're putting a lot of pressure on a bullpen that struggled a little bit at times, but they need to do a better job catching the baseball. They rank last in baseball in defensive runs saved. You know, it's not for lack of effort. Uh, we had a chance to talk to Joe Girardi before the game. Uh, they've been working at it like all teams do, taking ground balls, 
turning double plays. It's just a matter at 12.05 or 7.05 for a night game putting it all together. Upstairs to Corey Dickerson. You know, it's funny when you watch Howard, he, he reminds me a lot of a former Philly pitcher, Jared Eikhoff, kind of the same kind of body build. Jared Eikhoff, unfortunately, just so many injuries uh, limited his time with the Philadelphia Phillies, but a kind of similar style, similar built. Attack with a fastball. Mm. Dickerson connects Close. deep center and caught by Herrera, who made a sick play yesterday. Three up, three down on the other side. One scoreless inning in the books in Miami. One at the top, one at the bottom. Three, two. Runner goes from first. Dickerson toward right center field. Long run. Miller not going to get there. It gets down. One run will score easily, and he's in there with a two RBI triple. Marlins take a 4 2 lead. Aguilar doubled in the third, drove in run number two. So now Marlins at first and second. Into right field. There's a base hit for Aggie. Cooper getting waved around third. He'll score. And Aguilar has himself another RBI. 5 to 2 Marlins here in the seventh. Kinsler now faces Adam Duvall. Garrett Cooper pinch hit in the seventh inning. Cooper in left field. Does it have the legs? It's off the bottom of the wall. Sierra's going to score, and Cooper cruises into second. That's five in the nine game hit streak, nine to two. And the Phillies are one base runner away from bringing the tying run to the plate. Ground ball. That's Jazz. Long, strong throw. Got him. It's a Marlins win. We're into the second in South Florida, and let's go back to May 23rd. Zach Wheeler dealing. Fastball up in the zone, loves it. He's changed his approach a little bit with Philadelphia. Hey, it is working for him. Comes over from the New York Mets a couple years ago. Big signing by the Phillies, and he is anchored there towards the top of the rotation, and he is anchored in the dugout chatting with us for this half inning. Zach, great to have you on board. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Great to have you this season. The 2 3 80 RA as we show the numbers 78 strikeouts and Odubel Herrera, Alec Bohm, and Matt Joyce coming up for the Phillies and also the YouTube creators in the live commentary section. You know what to do. Any questions that you have for Zach, we'll relay some of them if we have time. Odubel Herrera bounces out. Hurry up. One down. <laughs> All right, I'll get to my first question, Zach. How is this season going for you on a personal standpoint pitching wise how do you evaluate what you're doing and I'll double down how nice is it to be pitching in front of many more human beings too. Yeah um, it's going well for me so far this year you know usually I get off to a little slow start and uh, usually turn on the second half for some reason but um, you know this year doing well so far uh, you know just getting ahead of guys and. Um, just attacking the zone definitely helps. Hey Zach it's Dan was there any concern coming off of a 60 game sprint that you guys had last year. Did you have to w alter your workouts or your throwing program before this season started. No not necessarily um, I, I just handled it like a normal off season and uh, you know like, like you said we only threw I think I only made 11 starts last year so I've done that plenty of times in the past because I've been hurt and even in the minor leagues you know you only throw a certain amount of innings they protect you these days so um, I think we're used to it more than people actually think and uh, yeah I mean you know this year hopefully you know we can stay healthy there are a lot of injuries this year because of the short season I think but um, so far so good for me nothing would it's like Cliff here man hey you just talked about a lot of injuries uh, unfortunately but for you is there a little bit more pressure on you to be that stopper guy to make sure that these you know if you have a losing streak you know you can stop that uh, with your outing. Yeah definitely um, you know it's playing with those guys in New York man I mean it, yeah. was, it was a awesome staff one through five so you're out there trying to beat those guys every single outing and I've carried that here with me I feel like um, you know you got Knowles and Eflin and 
you know, Vinny's tossing the ball well right now. And then you got Spencer. I mean, you know, you got a lot of good arms here too. So mm -hmm. you try to go out there and uh, over or you know outperform the guy in front of you. You know, friendly competition. But yeah, I mean, you know, like the other day we lost four games in a row. Uh, I wasn't gonna let the Red Sox beat me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you gotta have that mindset going in. No matter you know how the results turn out, you gotta have that mindset going in that you are gonna be that stopper. A ball and a strike to Matt Joyce with two outs. I'll get at least one question in from our YouTube creators. And Jolly Olive says, what's it like being division rivals against a team you were a part of for so many years in the Mets? This one driven deep right ah. and Duvall's there. Can you give me a 10 second answer? Yeah, no, it's fun playing against those guys. You know, I made a lot of good friends over there and in, uh, in my time. And, um, you know, it's fun pitching against those guys and uh, competing against them. Zach, I wish we had more time. <laughs> we enjoyed it, though. <laughs> Quick Thanks, one so bro. far. Thank you for the time, all right? All right. Thanks for having me, guys. That's Zach Wheeler. Again, a 1-2-3 frame for the Phillies offense. Back to the Marlins in the second. Reese Hoskins coming up. Phillies and Marlins scoreless fourth inning. Hit high and deep left field and forget about it. It is gone. And Reese Hoskins hits a bullet out to left. It's his 10th home run of the season, and the Phillies are on the board. They lead it two to nothing. Six scoreless innings. Outstanding work by Vince Velasquez. 23 innings, three earned runs in his last four starts. Counting tonight, Vince uh, was uh, shushing the crowd as he was walking off. Alcantara absolutely dominant since the, that home run. He was really superb. I mean, you make one mistake, and the, at the moment, he's on the hook for the loss. Tapper first base side. Sandy picks it up, underhands to Aguilar for the out. Nice work, Sandy Alcantara through eight innings. And Corey Dickerson's coming up. And he pops it up out to center field. O'Double says he has it. He's under it. Makes the catch, and the ball game is over. And the Phillies hang on and win it by a final score of two nothing. An inning and a half of clean baseball so far in Miami. Time for our first poll question on YouTube. You can get involved on your phone, on your computer. You see this, your favorite Philly fanatic moment. We'll show you some options video-wise. So if you want to wait for your vote, that's cool. Dan, can you pick from one? Oh, I already have mine. It's <laughs> it's the Tommy Lasorda strike. <laughs> Listen, especially when you came to Veteran Stadium. You were prepared for the fanatic to lay it on you, and he laid it on Tommy Lasorda. He did. We have video. Don't worry. It's coming soon. As we're in the last of the second, Adam Duvall takes a strike on the outside corner. Scott Brondan, please at Cliff Floyd, and Christina DiNicola. Cliff, did you get to see the options to make yeah, a choice? I'm, I'm following Dan. I mean, that's the best one of all four of those, right? Yeah, I think so. So yeah. we'll have to show that one first. You guys are... Heavily influencing the audience. I have a feeling that's going to be the case. Duvall strikes it left center, deep, warning track, and off the wall. It's played by Quinn, and he'll truck into second base with a stand up double to lead Just off the inning. Him that one. Wow. Looked like a first pitch breaking ball, too, from Spencer Howard. Looked at that slider, and Duvall, known for hunting a fastball. I think the idea was right. This one just kind of spun over the inner third. You can see the grip right there. He's on the side of the ball. This ball intended to be down and away. It's one of those front door up and in. Kind of speed up the bat speed of the ball. Yeah, you know, Danny, and, and you think about this lineup. They have some youth, obviously, but they have some veteran players and, and presence from a guy like Adam Duvall, who's been around the league for a long time, Jesus Aguilar, who's not in the lineup. But this is what Duvall has been doing this season, and... Uh, I mean, he's been huge for this Marlins team. Lewin Diaz takes a strike. That would have been a home run in 13 MLB ballparks, almost half. And they move the fences in, so. That's right. Moved him in about 12 feet in center and right center. 
So they never affected really left center. Nope. Diaz fouls it back. <laughs> Unfortunately, they didn't move it in 12 feet for <laughs> Duval in his favorite spot. Now, this is a little bit that last swing is a little bit of a dickhead the way the baseball is played in 2021. You would normally think with your five ball hitter, you look to try to hit something on the right side to get Duval over to third base. All bets off now on an 0-2 count. You're kind of in defense mode, but that get him over, get him in, that baseball is kind of going out the window. I found that clip for you, Dan. <laughs> this is classic fanatic Tommy Lasorda. That that those are the good old days of the vet, 1988. Tommy took exception to this right here. Here he comes. <laughs> and he's going after him. Look at Tommy. <laughs> this is a, and then he hits him with it. <laughs> oh. Can wow. we get an opposing manager to do something like that in Philly? That would be nice. That's a nice called strike three from Spencer Howard. Second K of the day as he paints the bottom of the zone. Uh, Tommy must have woke up on the wrong side of the bed that morning. Yeah. Cliff, and he, he had his mind made up when he was going to the ballpark. <laughs> he was going to get a piece of the fanatic. <laughs> yes, he did. That's a great pitch right there by Spencer Howard. And, you know, a bat, a bat, a bat. Ideas and, and then you alluded to it. That's just that's just not going to get it done. I've been talking about opportunities for these guys. If you want to play and play consistently, you have to get that guy to third base, man. Especially when you're talking about winning games and putting yourself in position. You're game and a half out of first place. Especially a team like the Marlins, they're not going to hit a lot of home runs. This ballpark is so spacious in Miami. They play in a lot of one-run games, low-scoring games. They're not a team that's going to thump a lot. So, you know you. Like to take advantage. You have a leadoff double, get that guy over to third. Then you have a veteran guy like Sandy Leone. And there's a guy that can handle the bat in his day, Don Mattingly. And it's amazing he's not into the Hall of Fame, one of the great hitters in the 80s. 1985 AL MVP, six time All Star. Eight home runs in eight consecutive games in 1988. This guy had done it all. Gold Glover at first base. Leone, deep left. Quinn at the track. He makes the catch, tagging up his Duval, and he's in there. Yeah, Downey Baseball could do it all. We were just talking about him, that sack fly right there. And what a handler of the bat that he was. He didn't strike out a whole lot. And he was an equal opportunity basher, too. Hit, Look at it, that hit righties is. and lefties. Pretty good managerial career, too, yeah. right? Yeah. Awesome, man. He can hound that glove, too, couldn't he, D? Oh, could he ever? <laughs> Donnie Baseball. <laughs> you know you're good when you're like Teddy Ball Game, Donnie Baseball, you know, right? They tag you all different type of nicknames. 18 at bats against you, Dan. Pride and joy of Evansville, Indiana. He and I both from the Hoosier State. Breaking ball just misses from Howard, so two down, Duval 90 feet away from a scoring chance. Well, Scott, you can't throw out the bats and not give the average. Well, I was waiting for Dan to ask. Yeah. Well, I know you, I know you're going to you. say there was a home run in there because he hit, he took me walk off too. <laughs> oh, he did have a walk off. Line drive in the bleachers in that short porch at the old Yankee Stadium. You don't forget those, do you? Never. Six for 18. That's a six for 18. See. He was really good because Dan, I'm telling you, every time I think about lefty relievers, I'm like, never want to face him. I'm just never want to face him. But six for 18. I, I, I have dreams of about three or four home runs. Cecil Fielder hit one out out of County Stadium off me. Cliff Floyd took me straight away center field in Shea Stadium on a night. I'm telling you, there wasn't a man alive going to hit a ballpark out of Shea that night. Cliff, I know you remember it well. It was cold. It was damp. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to see how far you can hit it. I'm not walking you. Boy, that plan didn't work. <laughs> Buggy with me. Oh, man. Yeah. Cliff, 5 for 18 against DP. And that bomb was a loud one. It should have counted for like four of them. <laughs> Seriously, there are some nights when you, you know, especially when you're playing in those open air stadiums where it's cold and it's damp, and it's early in the year. Shea was a really good ballpark, a pitcher's ballpark. The last thing you're thinking was somebody to take you deep, particularly the straightaway center field. 
Cliff, he bucked that myth. <laughs> <laughs> Got lucky. It's three and one to Isan Diaz. Duvall started off the inning with a double. Then strike out, fly out to left. And Diaz is four for his last nine over a three game span. And now fills up the count. Really gutsy pitch right there. Three one changeup, and that's what Spencer Howard's going to have to do to hang around at the big league level. Listen, he has a good fastball. We've seen that. This is a really good pitch. This is a pitch a guy two or three years in the big leagues has to master. Now you can just about do anything you want. Right now with Diaz, you've shown the changeup to slow him down. You could throw anything in your arsenal. Ooh. Just missed. I guess. <laughs> this guy said, you guess, huh? I mean, we can show that and see what the box says. This is a really good pitch, three and two. Another changeup mm. might have been a hair down in the strike zone. There you can see the grip, the circle changeup grip, well located. You can see Diaz thinking that it's a fastball in, kind of leaks out there. And see, for me, I'm looking at that from the standpoint of catcher framing, Dan, and how much he pulled that ball up. I, I think when you're framing the baseball, I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. It's part of the game now. But when you're framing too much, it gives away a great pitch like that, in my opinion. John Birdie connects the other way. Joyce hustling towards the line, and he makes the catch in stride to retire the side. Marlins lead two on, still scoreless after two. Trevor Rogers is going to join us in the next half inning. YouTube creators bring on those questions. Ball two strikes. Reaches out. Pops it out to right field, tagging a third is Segura. Duvall's got a good arm. He's got six outfield assists. Coming home with Segura. The throw to the plate is cut off, and the Phillies take the lead. It's two to one. Diaz will be the hitter. Soft Diaz. Center field. Wow, wow, wow. Well hit. Herrera's going back, and he is there. He pulled it right off the top of the fence. What a play. Oh, Duvall Herrera just robbed Isan Diaz of a home run. Base hit should score two now. Is a base hit in the right field. One run is in. Here comes the second, and Bernie comes through. Marlins take the lead in the eighth. Wouldn't mind an extra run, I bet. Might get it right here. Past Miller. Bernie around third. He'll score. Devers has a ribby, and it's a 4 2 Marlins lead. And some insurance for the Marlins. Quinn is the runner at first. Segura the tying run. Right back to Garcia, bobbles, gathers, throws to first, finishes it off. It's a Marlins win. What a comeback win for the Marlins. You did say you wanted popcorn before, didn't you? <laughs> what are you doing? He's drunk. Uh, He's got to be drunk. Look just at it. Just destroying our What booth. are you doing? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Why do people like you? <laughs> Look at Tom McCarthy and John Crook. They're like, what in the world are you doing to our booth? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite Philly fanatic moment. So the popcorn delivery is an option. We showed you Lasorda in the MLB account said the Lasorda moment still gets insane numbers on the YouTube channel. And joining us right now live on a global stage on YouTube, our Glad You Asked interview, Trevor Rogers. Trevor, your thoughts on the Philly fanatic? Do you have a favorite moment or a favorite mascot? Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh Philly Fanatic's definitely up there. Uh, you never know what he's going to do. Always keeps it light and fun. Uh, and <laughs> definitely gives the opposing team a, a little grief, that's for sure. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with us today for this half inning. Off to a superb start to your season. And also, most importantly, I, I watched you last time out. There's the towel. You need it. Uh, you smashed a ball that Reese Hoskins couldn't bring down. This is a nice play at third by Birdie. Throws across for the out to retire Ronald Torres. 
one away. But let's, Boy, start, let's start with your bat first. Trevor, you know what I'm talking about from the other day? Couldn't bring the ball down uh, was Hoskins. I think they originally called it an error, but gave you the knock, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, at least I, I hope they gave me the knock, man. I got the barrel <laughs> out there, and I, I got all that one, that's for sure. You smoked it. Look at Birdie make a sweet play. Well, you got to make sure they give you that knock, Trevor. They don't come easy. Yeah, I, I need a few more. <laughs> I, need, I need to pad the stats, that's for sure. <laughs> Hey, Trevor and Stan, what have you done differently in 2021 as opposed to last year? Yeah, that's a great question. I think probably my changeup, uh, definitely developing the changeup, uh, lefty on lefty and to righties as well. Um, changeup has been huge for me, and then developing the, the slider. Uh, I've been able to throw it back door a few times and then to the back foot. So really developing my secondary pitches uh, has been huge for me this year. Hey, Travis Cliff here. Without, without, um, you know, messing with Jesus, who's sitting right there to your left, uh, how big has he been for that clubhouse? I know he's been big on the field, but as far as, you know, the, the young clubhouse, how big has he been? I, he's, I know he's messing with you right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's been huge, you know. Yeah, he's been, he's been, been, been awesome, you know, um, especially to, our, to these young guys and, just, just to see how it goes about his business every day. Um, it, it's definitely a good good guy to look up to, a uh, good guy to follow, and I'm, I'm glad to have him on our on our ball club, that's for sure. You know, we do the YouTube Player of the Game trophy later, but you're getting all kinds of goodies right now for doing this interview. Yeah, no, no joke. I haven't, I haven't had teammates haven't given me this much attention in forever. I can't believe this. We should do this every Surprised day. I even know my name. Yeah, I, shoot, I'm all for it. I am all for it. Getting candy, getting drinks. Oh, man. I'm loving it right now. Yeah, I'm getting is, spoiled. This is room service, dugout service right now with Trevor <laughs> Rogers. I love it. Rafael Marchand is on first after the base hit. Torres was robbed by Birdie. And now number nine hitter, the pitcher, Spencer Howard. I've got one from our YouTube creators. Five Point Vids asks, Trevor, as a lifelong pitcher, how do you feel about pitchers hitting, and how do you prepare to take at-bats? <laughs> Um, I mean, I just try and get the job done. Um, everyone in the stadium probably knows I'm going to bunt 95% of the time. So if I can get the bunt down and just get my get the guys over and get the my guys an opportunity to score some runs, um, then I'll do my job. Uh, I don't I don't expect anything less or anything more, to be honest with you. Trevor, were you a good hitter in high school? I, I could I could handle a little bit of bat in uh, high school in uh, New Mexico. We actually are, we use wood bat in high school, mm -hmm. so that uh, I enjoyed using wood bat. Um, I was usually three or four hole, so I had a little pop, a little juice in the swing. Uh, not the prettiest looking swing, but uh, it got the job done. That's for sure. <laughs> Hey, does New Mexico get enough love as a state for baseball? Your cousin's former Marlin Cody Ross, right? Right, right. Yeah, we're, uh, we're kind of really low-key, not really known for, for baseball, but uh, definitely up in the Albuquerque area, there's some there's some really good teams, uh, La Cueva and El Dorado. Uh, so a lot of people don't know about it, but we got some good, good competition uh, in New Mexico. Well, you're helping the state make more of a name for itself. Most strikeouts by a lefty in first career starts ever. You're on the list with some big-time names, right, Dan? Look at these. Whenever you're on a list with Fernando Valenzuela and Herb Score, you're doing something. Add Francisco. How about Larry Allen? Ron Guidry to that list. So Trevor Rogers in some elite company. Yeah, he is. You know, Chad, when you look at this, I mean, the, the, the roster and the rotation, how it's situated, I mean, it's so young. What do you, what do you, what do you sort of go when you need to sort of find yourself if you, you know, if you, I mean, you haven't had to, you've been outstanding, but, you know, if, if you, if you want to look, seek help, you know, on, on this team, everybody's so young. What do you, where do you go? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I always go to Mel, our pitching coach. I mean, he's been doing it for a long time. Um, really, really knowledgeable. So I pick his brain every opportunity I get. And yeah, we're still young, but I mean, Sandy and Pablo, they've been up here for uh, a couple of years. So I try to pick their brains because uh, they've been successful up here. Um, and then we got some really experienced bullpen guys like Richard Blyer, uh, Bass, Detweiler. So uh, pretty much both sides, bullpen and starters, I kind of uh, try and pick their brains. Uh, 
to see what uh, gives them success. And that's a foul ball off the bat of Roman Quinn leadoff hitter for Philadelphia Trevor Rogers with us right now on YouTube. What was it like facing a team in back to back starts coming off your last one. Yeah you know it's always a little tougher you know um, it definitely gives a little bit more advantage to the hitter. Uh, so I definitely know I'm going to have to go and mix my patterns a little bit more I can't uh, give them the, the same mix uh, more than once you know. Um, but yeah it's always a fun challenge I, I enjoy the competition. Um, I just got to bear down even more and make pitches when I need to. Hey Trevor. Who's your inspiration is, is there someone that and it could be someone in the past or someone currently that you really watch that you're rolling back clips to see what they're doing with their repertoire or their delivery. Yeah all time favorite is the big unit Randy Johnson that that's my yeah. guy. Um, I always watch uh, clips from him. Obviously I caught him at the back end of his career but uh, when he was on the. Uh, the Mariners early in his career just 102 from uh, three quarter maybe even a little lower it was just amazing to watch and uh, I can't get enough of watching watching his stuff and how he went about his business. Apparently Randy Johnson came out to watch you when you were pitching in Arizona we're showing your last start on Monday against the Phillies getting the job done five innings one earned run three hits coming off the previous outing career high seven two thirds one run against Philadelphia there's the called strike so Trevor we appreciate the time Pablo Lopez your teammate did good work there in the third thanks and good luck the rest of the way we'll talk soon OK. Thanks guys appreciate you having me thank you man Trevor Rogers the great Marlin starting staff showing itself off again this afternoon. Sharply toward the hole, diving, stop, ball to his feet, throws to first in time. That was an excellent play by the six foot five inch Alec Ball. Wow. Smokes one, and what a play by Reese Hoskins. Rogers was looking for his first hit, and Reese Hoskins robbed him of it. That's full extension. Swinging the ground ball, deep short, diving to Reyes. He's got it. Hops up, long throw to first. Hoskins digs it out. He got him. Tremendous play, right? I, I didn't think he was going to have a chance to catch it, let alone get up and throw him out. And here's a swing and a drive down the left field line, and that one is going to be a fair ball and gone. And finally, <laughs> number 100 for Reese Hoskins. And that's got to feel good to get that monkey off his back. No doubt about it. And it's 3 and 2 to Harper. And he lines it to right field. That's in for a base hit. One is in. Here comes McCutcheon. The throw to the plate by Chisholm. Not in time. Two run single for Harper. It's a seven run eighth inning. And the Phillies lead it eight to three. Welcome back to the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube presented by Glad You Asked, a YouTube original series that examines timely questions around the impact of systemic racism on our communities and in our daily lives. All episodes are available right now to watch on YouTube for free. No subscription required. Head over to YouTube and just search Glad You Asked only on YouTube. Scott Braun, Dan Plesak, Cliff Floyd, and Christina Di Nicola. And look what yep. wins our first poll question. Fave Philly fanatic moment. Tommy Lasorda strikes back. I feel like we influenced that because you both picked it. We also showed the video, which was money. No, I think when you pass the test of time, 1988, right? In, in YouTube, a lot, of, a lot of the younger viewers, younger generation, upbeat, and it's good. When you can make it through 1988, to 2021 it's special you're doing something <laughs> right roller to Hoskins and he'll step on the bag for the first out this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the office of the commissioner of baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form in the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent I think Joe Girardi and the Philly staff can really keep a watchful eye on Spencer this inning 
going back to that last start you referred to against the Red Sox a big dip in velocity uh, so far looks has looked really sharp commanding the fastball mix in a couple of breaking balls we've seen some really good change ups there is a good fastball 95. Oh and Alec Bohm tried to make a play might have hurt himself. It's like he's favoring his right arm man. I'll tell you that's the last thing he's, this Philly team needs. Wow. Head bim. Collided with the. Side gate there and, and it's short and he's tall cliff so he well, kind of tumbles over it. I'll tell you what there's nothing in pregame that can prepare you for that right you talk about getting your work in and all that stuff but when you have the nest there to protect the fans and I get it. This is what you risk as far as organizations and their and their players. So you can kind of see that little <clears> indentation <throat> where it sticks out. Yeah. Though it's padded right there. I think initially he caught that left hip area. One of the things too you'll see players are they're not as hesitant to go towards the foul lines with that screening that netting you almost have a false sense of security that it's going to soften the blow so that's a really a terrific effort there by Bohm taking a look at his right hand and there's there's the look at the netting that throughout Major League Baseball now help to protect fans. We've seen a lot of players make catches and fall into that netting and use it almost like as a pillow to fall on. Like a trampoline sometimes yeah. in the outfield if, well, if there's some give to it. Well, there's no give in that one. That no. was some give, yeah, but I don't know if he Not really enough. wanted it. Bohm's okay. Two balls in a strike now to leadoff hitter Magniri Sierra. Well, if you think about it, if there's no netting there and he does go for that baseball that hard, then his face probably lands in the seats. Pretty good movement on that fastball right there. A couple of his fastballs, he's had that tailing motion going away from a lefty. That ball appeared to have a little bit of cut on it. See Marshawn sitting down and away and just a little natural cut. Corbin Burns of the Brewers has really brought that pitch in vogue right now. There's a, another good fastball at 94 miles an hour. So if you're George Girardi right now, you have to like what you've seen. His pitch count, that was his 35th pitch. He's maintained his velocity. We've seen a good assortment of change ups. It's been a good pitch. Has slipped a couple of breaking balls over for strike. So far, so good. Got him. Man, what a nice, that was a cha nice change up. I always thought that that was the best combination. And you know, it was sort of the one that gave me the work, you know, the, the most trouble is that fastball change up combo. There you see the grip, the yeah. circle change up. And it gets away with this one here. The intended target was down and away. You can see Marshawn sitting down and away and reaching across his body. Most of the time when your catcher has to reach that far away to try to bring a ball even though it's a strike. It's a difficult pitch for an umpire to call for a strike. And see Dan for me that's the difference in Spencer right there is being able to. Get a swing. On a first pitch, other than your fastball, because if you know as a hitter, our meeting tells us that he's throwing his fastball, his four seam was 72.7% uh, of the time this season. Okay, so that's up from 56% last year. So I'm giving you numbers, so we see all this, and then you come with that, and it gets you off the fastball enough to where you fly out to right field like that. Lovely fly ball for Matt Joyce and another perfect inning two out of three so far today for young Spencer Howard. Duvall. And now Bohm off the wall and right. Duvall gets it in Harper stops oh. and there's another one that's another outfield assist for Adam Duvall. Lined and caught by Miggy Rowe. What a play at short. Rojas takes a hit away. Here comes a throw from Sierra. Gets to the plate. Picked by Lionel. What a tag. You gotta be kidding me. What a throw by Sierra and what a 
play on the back end by Sandy Leon. Castro deals. And Cooper sends one in the air left field. This one's hit deep. This one's gone. We're tied in the seventh. Garrett Cooper does it again. Payoff pitch coming. This is fly ball out to deep left center field. Garrett Cooper is the hero today. And so Marlins walk off winner. A big home run in last night's ball game. Tied it up tonight. The walk off winner. For the Marlins, their second walk off victory of the season. And boy, did they need this win. We're jumping into the fourth in Miami, and MLB is currently in the midst of its food fight, a bracket competition where all 30 teams put their ballpark signature food item against each other. Best food in baseball. Did you guys eat lunch, Cliff? Did you eat breakfast? Oh, look at the I did, but, oh, You know, man. when you show me this, guy, I'm ready. <laughs> Dan, can you handle that? Oh, could I ever? <laughs> How about there's a there's a guy all the way down from South Philly. Man, I'm definitely going. Dan, are we definitely going with the Philly cheesesteak? Oh, for sure. I'm going to tell you something. The weather's warming up. More and more mm. fans allowed to the ballpark. You will see me at Citizens Bank Ballpark, the next home stand. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Just a short drive. Great right. ballpark food. Great ambiance. Weekly handled by Lewin Diaz and more weak contact from Pablo Lopez. That's his specialty to sit down Brad Miller. Now here comes Reese Hoskins, who is one of the players mic'd up for us today. I'm a cereal guy through and through. Well, what about waffle crisp? Oh, never had that. Oh, man. The sneaky one that not a lot of people got into, Golden Grams. Love Golden Grams. They just get soggy super fast. So, hell of a play, dude. Nice job. I love that. Reese Hoskins, one of the leaders on this Phillies team. He's been there a while now, and we cereal kind of sort too, oh, right? Man. The cereal options uh, doesn't cool. like Throwback. it. They get soggy quickly. Yeah, he, <laughs> I like you know, that. He's absolutely right. You better when you pour the milk. It's like right now. Don't check your phone. Nothing. You better eat them right then and there. Yeah, there's a shot clock on that, right? Yeah, it Otherwise, is. it expires. It's, it's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing worse than soggy cereal. I'm going to tell you something. You know, having pitched for 18 seasons in the big leagues, I never really enjoyed ballpark food until I was done playing. Retired in 2003, and I was a limited season ticket holder with the Chicago White Sox, and I could not get over what I was missing for 18 years with ballpark food. Oh, Scott. If you've never, it's worth making a trip to drive to Citizens Bank Ballpark just to go out in that left and right center field area. And they have just world class food there. Now I'm telling you right there Philly cheesesteak with some oh, French man. fries. Look at these oh, guys he get getting it. after it. Oh, oh. Let's go. Uh oh. Reese Hoskins goes down. That one avoided him, but just barely. Oh, a close call. Some chin music. Man. Well, I know he, I know he's mic'd up, but we probably won't hear it. No. After that pitch, we'll just say. How scary is this, Cliff? Oh man, look, you're you're so down in. You're like, hit, hit, hit. Oh boy, get away, turn. And that is what you're taught. You taught you taught to turn away from that baseball just like that. We've seen a few guys, uh, one being, you know, John Carl Stanton get hit in the face. I mean, you got you got to be prepared for so a lot, man. Kevin Pilar, a couple of weeks ago yeah. with the Mets, you can see Hoskins wears that extension, almost looks like a football helmet that's on the side of that helmet. Bryce Harper was clipped. Harper currently on the injured list. Thank goodness that he had, you know, that that it hit the helmet. Though. Oof, that's scary, man. Full bow to Reese. We'll do it again. This is what I'm referring to with Bryce. He's currently. On the shelf, April 28th. Oh. Mm. 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 It's 
so much talk in the game with, you know, what pitchers are allowed to have on their hands, you know, to have more control, yada, yada, yada. Look. Hoskins with a uh, deep drive. Left center, and he got it. That is the ultimate payback. Right there as he's saluting the fellas out in the bullpen. Gets knocked down two and two. Says, okay, doesn't give up that at bat. Gutsy at bat. Big swing of the bat. He's one of the keys. We talked yeah, about is. it before the game. Reese Hoskins muscles up for his 11th of the year. Eight of them on the road. And he breaks the ice for the Phillies. It's 1-0, his second of the series. And he hit that win with a little added motivation. All you need to know about Reese Hoskins right there. Takes one up, up on the chin, knocks him down, and stays in and hangs in against a tough righty in Lopez. Well, I'll tell you what, it makes you focus more when you get knocked down. And he absolutely stays on this change up. Through it, you see the balance, you see the eyes, and he knew it when he hit it that he got it. Hit a big home run in Tuesday's game yeah, off it, of Alcantara. Two big bombs in this series. Yeah, third home, homer in the last six games. ARBIs in that stretch. He's been huge for this team, especially when you have your, your big boy and Harper down. I mean, Reese is stepping up. I do want to hear the mic on the homer, Cliff. Oh, yeah. Well, look, you might, you might not hear that either. <laughs> we'll work on turning that around. He was hyped running around. Well, as soon as he hit it, you know he got it. We'll see if it was clean. <laughs> <laughs> so stay tuned. That's what we're referring to, people. <laughs> yeah. Family show. Family game. Odubel Herrera with one out. Nobody on for Philly after the Hoskins solo shot. 403 feet. Philly's very encouraged. Oduba Herrera is starting to swing the bat much better. Made a tremendous catch in last night's game in seventh inning. A deep fly ball to center field. Aaron Nola was twirling a gem last night and brought one, what would have been a home run, brought back into the ballpark. Unfortunately, the Phillies lost the lead in the eighth inning of that game and it kind of went unnoticed, but it was a terrific play. Foul ground. Diaz thinks he found it. No, it's on the other side of the screen. Has that glare right now? I've seen that from you, Cliff. Well, you're just thinking about everything. You're thinking about the whole at bat, right? You just plan it back. And believe it or not, you, yeah, you know, you you talk, you're talking about it amongst your boys right there. But you're like, yo, in your head, you're like, yeah, you knocked me down. <laughs> I did what I needed to do. But you're thinking about the next at bat right now. You're thinking about what you got to do on the field. That that's just the game right there in itself. You see that you know he sat there for a second. Now the boys talking to him. And what was that pitch change up? Yeah, I stayed on it. And now we got some. Herrera is all over that one, and it's into the gap, and he's heading for two, and he's in there with a one-out double. Phillies putting on their hitting shoes here. Day game after night game early start 12 10 start. There's the change up again. You see the circle change up grip and Oduble keeps his head down and drives this ball to the gap and left center field with the shift. This ball almost gets to the wall. A great job of cutting it off but this would have been three bases. When open we talked about the usage of Pablo and his change up and Phillies hitters seem to have been paying attention to detail. This is another guy, Cliff. The Phillies need to get going. Boehm had such a big year last year. Big part of that lineup. You see that average on the year down a little bit to 211 on the year. Cliff, we had a chance to talk to Joe Girardi. And it's a little bit of bad luck, a little bit of the league making some adjustments to Boehm. But if the Phillies are going to get back and stay in contention, 
They're going to need this guy to start driving in some runs. He's going the other way, and that's going to drop. Herrera is going to hold up at third. It's a single for Bohm. Runners on the corners. The Phillies pouncing now with a homer, a double, and a single after the first out here in the fourth. Really good sign here. This is a good fastball that runs in on Bohm. He doesn't try to pull it 94 miles an hour. Good inside out swing. Line drive and a great approach. And then that's that's the one thing when you talk about getting going can get you going right not not trying to go right field but letting the pitch get deep on you and and maybe thinking about breaking your bat but stand up the middle that's always the one remedy to get you going and sort of get you out of a funk in your head. Bone might have had some extra motivation too as his right pinky was being treated in the dugout and then he steps back in there and contributes. Could have been part of that foul ball he went through the inning when he ran into that netting around the dugout at third base. It's a good leaderboard to be a part of National League opposite field hits for a young hitter to be going the other way consistently like he does. Yeah well we we talk about the shift and everything that's going on in the game and you and you have to play bomb you have to play him straight up. I mean that's how good of a hit he's going to be last year small sample size with COVID and all that stuff. He had a great you know a, a great season but this is the adjustment he has to make to what the league is going to do. They have they paying attention to him now and so he has to make the adjustments to what they're doing not change who he is but just get back to uh, what made him successful in his first year. Matt Joyce brings the first pitch downstairs. Boehm last year hit 338, second place for rookie of the year in the National League. And a 452 batting average with runners in scoring position. Joyce sends one, center. Sierra. Has it that should be plenty deep enough Herrera come on down. It's two nothing Phillies on the sack fly from Matt Joyce. On the previous play they didn't run on Adam Duvall and Christina that makes sense given how good Duvall has been out there. Yep. Thanks Scott. Yeah when the Marlins signed Adam Duvall before spring training they expected a middle of the order bat but since he took over in right field for the first time every day. Uh, he has been great. He actually leads MLB with 10 defensive run saves. He has six assists. That's on the ground. Sweet play at short for the out at wow. second. How about Miguel Rojas. Flipping it over to Isan Diaz to retire the side. Two runs come across though for the Phillies including a Mammoth smash off the bat of Reese Hoskins. 2 0 Philadelphia. Look at Miggy Rowe. So solid at short. <laughs> the cheerful man with the colorful hair is a smooth young infielder known as Jazz. He's going to be jazzy. He's going to be fun. But like, He's going to always just be chill by every situation at the same time. Jazz Chisholm has the drip. But don't get the wrong idea. He doesn't talk about himself in the third person because he's arrogant. I get on the field and as soon as that glove is on my hand, it's like, okay, Jay Nasty, don't forget it. He talks about himself in the third person because he has an array of alter egos. Jay Nasty. Prince. The Kid as in Hall of Famer Ken Griffey Jr., whose swing Chisholm's resembles. I'd be at the play like just doing everything that he used to do and like that was just my thing. Y'all think the kid is like really nice, but like watch when you see Jay Nasty out there, he gonna go get it and he gonna get everything. Jay Nasty is Chisholm's disposition on defense and Prince, a persona he got from his grandmother. That's just all she thought of me was just like, you're my prince, you're royalty, and you're always going to be great at everything you do because you're blessed with that royalty in your blood.
So you want to be a hitter in the big leagues and take some guts as Reese Hoskins takes a first pitch fastball for a strike and gets a cutter away, 1-1 count. So he's sitting pretty 2-1, right? Looking for a heater. Oh, look out! Sees a good sinker down the zone that he doesn't chase, and he gets a two-seamer that he has to his liking right here. And boy, he just turns this one around. One swing in the bat, you can see that bat flip right there. Gutsy at bat from Reese Hoskins. Home run number 11 on the season. He had a big start to the year in the power department. And that's a strike to Dickerson. This is a big inning for Spencer Howard. Got to get the middle part of the order. Three, four, and five. You just scored two runs. You often refer to this inning as one of those shutdown innings for a young pitcher that struggled against the Red Sox after a couple of clean innings. Be interesting, Scott, to see how he handles this after the Phillies spot him with a two-run lead. Quickly ahead of Corey Dickerson. Spencer Howard, 68 pitches last time out. Two runs, three innings, one hit, four walks, one hit batter. I don't know what work he's done between that start and this one, but he looks really locked in, not overthrowing. A couple of breaking balls he's gotten away with. He's mislocation with some friendly called strikes, but he's looked really good. Mechanics, he's staying up over the rubber really well, not falling off towards first base. Popped up, boom. Putting his hand out this time against the go. netting and makes the catch. Now he's got a feel for that area. Two balls in the same spot in the last 20 minutes. Bone puts away Dickerson. Well, I think he got away with a fastball in the zone 0-2 right there, but great play by Bone. Just understanding, you know, what he has to do to protect himself when you get close to that netting and that wall over there by third base. Hey, Christina, I just saw you. How was that? What did it look like in person? Thanks, Scott. So I am a former softball player, and the one time I don't bring my glove to a ballpark, <laughs> uh, that's easily the closest I've ever had a foul ball. Well, it wasn't a foul. Well, it was. But, you know, I think this one worked a lot better for Alec than the first one, luckily. Um, hey, hey, Christina, it's no Dan. No one was hurt. We, we were talking. It's, hey. Do you think there's an age restriction on when you should or shouldn't bring a glove? This is my philosophy. Safety first. Mm. I, agree. Um, I like my live my livelihood is my hands. I'm a writer. Uh, if I try to catch a foul ball in the press box and broke my hand, then I am in trouble. You know, Christina, I, I think for a lot of these you know fans that come out, they think it's easy to catch a foul ball. It's like, no, I got this. No big deal. Bare hands. I got. No, it. I know. Well, and the problem is, I, I'm thinking back to my softball coaches of the year. Soft hands and. I'm pretty sure most of the fans in the ballpark didn't get that instruction, so they're going to be jabbing at it. Yeah. Well, if you're on a date and, you know, your girl don't bring her glove and you bring yours, you better protect her. <laughs> That's right. Nice curveball from Howard. As he rings up Adam Duvall. Yeah, that's probably the best curveball we've seen from Spencer this afternoon. Locked up Adam Duvall had a double on him the first time. Here's a good look at it right here. That's that 12 to 6 hook. High strike that's been called more and more in baseball. You can see that spike curveball. Great 12 to 6 rotation. So Duvall frozen. Now Lewin Diaz watches a breaking pitch. Dan, without seeing his last start, I would say, and this is all speculation when you say what he's done differently, it's probably that first pitch. We've seen a curveball first pitch. We've seen a changeup now first pitch. That's probably a little bit different than what he's done in the past. It, it, you know what it does too, Cliff? It makes that fastball that's 93 to 95 play a lot, a couple of ticks better. Yeah. And that's one of the keys to pitching. Uh, Jacob DeGrom and Garrett Cole, the two best in the business. I get it, they throw 98 to 100, but they can land breaking balls, throw changeups. It's not just one pitch that gets them through. There's another good curveball that spiked hook at 77. You know, you often hear about pitching, it's about real estate, location, location, location. A lot of times it's like real estate. Can you sell yourself that your stuff is good enough to attack the strike zone? And that's what Spencer Howard's doing a terrific job, particularly after the Phillies scored two runs in the top of the fourth inning. Great shutdown inning so far. So you get the percentage 
of 80%, which he's thrown today, 80% of the time, right? And you're saying, okay, well, well, that's pretty much right where he's been the whole season. But it's also the other times he's gotten swings or he's thrown it for a strike to sort of put himself in a better position to utilize that fastball. 34 strikes out of 48 pitches. There's another. I mean, there, there's Scotty in itself. We always talk about splitting the plate with the fastball. That's trouble for a pitcher, especially hitters out there, you know, hunting the fastball. Well, he gets away with it because in the back of your mind, it's like, this might be that good changeup or that curveball he's been throwing up here. A little traffic against Howard in the second, but one, two, three, first, one, two, three, second. Mm, trying to pick up another perfect frame. Diaz didn't go around, counts full. What button are you pressing on this pitcher menu? Howard goes with the heat. It's on the ground. Nice stop by Miller. Gets up and makes the play. So there you go. Three up, three down again for Howard. Three of his four innings, he's done the trick. The rookie looking very sharp in his second start of the season. And Brad Miller plays just about anywhere. He's a vet. He's a pro. He does it well. The Phillies love him. 2 nothing, Philadelphia. Titans lead it 2 nothing over the fish in the fifth. And each week this season, we're going to focus on a YouTube content creator featured in our live game commentary section. Today, our creator spotlight shines on Jolly Olive. On his channel, you can watch videos on current MLB news, as well as some great clips considered forgotten in the sport. Jolly Olive, who creates about 8 to 10 minute videos focusing on those topics. is a Mets fan. Favorite MLB moment, his first playoff game, NLDS game four, Mets and Dodgers. Over 18,000 subscribers, over a million views. And his channel was only launched about nine months ago. Let's pay off the poll. Favorite MLB ballpark delicacy. Phillies fans coming in hot with the cheesesteak. Telling you, man, it's a problem. A good one, but a problem. Landslide victory, yes. too. Cheese steaks for everyone. Miami's Cuban sandwich checking in at second place. That one's on a few bounces for Diaz. And that sits down Marshawn. Sushi options in the ballpark as well. Actually, you know what? I I do a couple of games down there in Miami. Sushi is pretty good there. Cliff, yeah. that's what I want to ask. Give us a scouting report on the yeah. field down in Miami at the you, ballpark. That, you know, every once in a while, obviously, you know, Miami, um, you know, you have you have the Cuban sandwich. They have a nice little Cuban sandwich uh, spot there. Pretty good when you when you you know when you've done the Peloton bike and you you know you're feeling a little frisky, and then when you're feeling like you want to 
you know, save yourself a little bit. They have a sushi bar there that's really dang good, man. And uh, so, it's it, you know what? I, I'll tell you what. I, I go for sushi because I'm lazy, and it's right there by our booth. But, as uh, you know, um, I haven't tried the Nathan's Hot Dog. They have a nice little sausage stand there as well, D. So, um, but that line is always too long, so I keep it moving. That was an A-plus breakdown, Dan. Yeah. Well, Good job, Cliff. It's, you know, it's always my, my kids, when I've taken them to the game, they love. And I, I say something all the time, like, y'all don't eat hot dogs at home, but when y'all come to the ballpark, y'all get hot dogs. I don't get it. You know, well, it's different here. So, okay. But every kid you see has a hot dog or nachos. We're seeing it here. I might just drive to Citizens Bank. I know there's not a game going on. See if so you're making me hungry, Cliff. <laughs> I'm going to have to get a hold of the Phillies PR guy, Greg Castriato. Tell him, Greg, open the doors. I need a cheesesteak. Lopez thought he had strike three. Now he finds it. Then nobody has a clue of how good those cheesesteaks are in the clubhouse. People think we're getting, we're talking about on the street. But they are good, you know, when you, when you go over to, you know, when, you, when you're in downtown Philly. But the cheesesteaks in the clubhouse we had were guys never ate uh, dinner after the game. They had cheesesteaks made for them to take home to the hotel. Well, the worst thing for me would be a day game clip and you're fighting the temptation have one of those cheesesteaks at about 1030 in the morning and you're sitting in a bullpen. I would be sitting in a bullpen, the visiting bullpen in the old vet. thinking, wow, I hope they don't call my number today because I don't know if I can move. And I could never stop with just one clip. I was oh, double man. fisted. Double fisted for sure. It's crazy. Would Next. go into Philadelphia weighing 215. <laughs> a three day trip. I go out there weighing 235. Next time we do a game this early, I'm bringing food oh. for both of you. Oh. Man, I got you. I need to go to the bank quickly. <laughs> Citizens Bank Park <laughs> on my mind. Two gone, Roman Quinn. Two and one. He showed some of the great work that Pablo Lopez has been up to, especially in the past couple seasons. Two earned runs are fewer more often than not. Just a, a few clunkers in his career. Really just four starts that didn't work out well for him. Over the last few seasons, that's the pitch right there, Scott. You know, when, when you talk about him and maturing, understanding what he has to do, that's been the biggest eye opener for me is watching his maturity as far as having an ERA over five in 2019, and then steadily going down to where he understands that you can't just get away with throwing a 90 mile an hour, 95 mile an hour fastball. Use that change piece and use it well. Two strikeouts and a one, two, three fifth for Pablo Lopez. Here's the pitch to say. are discussing it. Whoa! Now watch it. They're going to reverse the ruling. They want to know how can anybody reverse the ruling of the third base umpire who was closer to the play than anybody. Whoa! What's breaking out now? Boy, Jim Fry has been carried back. Look at the graphics there. Question mark on the score. <laughs> One of the prize baseball fights of all time. Hey, something we like to do to add to the viewing experience, check out YouTube's live game commentary featuring MLB, the 
Billy's channel, the Marlins, and a select group of YouTube creators that contribute with questions and comments. You can view that live game commentary on your computer, your smart TV, your mobile device. We'll be keeping an eye on that discussion throughout the broadcast. They help us out. They organically hook us up with some really good notes and questions throughout the day here on YouTube. Also, MLB Originals Season 2 is live on YouTube. New episodes every week. See your favorite players and learn more about the game you love on YouTube.com slash MLB. Oh, it's Cliff's Backyard. You know what I'm saying? Literally, I'm about 10 minutes from there. I miss Miami. I lived there for five years, went to the University of Miami. So did Christina Di Nicola. We were in the same class. Wait a minute, you're in the same class as Christina? Yeah, true story. Both worked for the Miami Hurricane newspaper. This nice. is Leon. That's the dream right there, Cliff. You go to school for journalism or broadcast journalism, and now you're working a Marlins game. Are you big time? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> But appreciative of where I'm at. But if Spencer that. Howard keeps pitching like this, he's going to buy himself a home somewhere in Miami if he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> he's been brilliant. Through four innings, he's allowed one one hit, a double by Adam Duvall in the second inning. He's been in command of all three of his pitches. There's another good heater. Good piece of hitting right there. Leon just takes what he's given and goes to left. It's a base hit. Reese Hoskins is mic'd up today on YouTube. Give us the goods, Reese. That's it, bad, bro. What would you have? Low? Low there? Yeah, close pitch. Nice eye. Good take. That's awesome. Isan that is. is up right now, too, but that was his last A-B. His first of the day, a base on balls. Reese Hoskins knows a good take. That's a quality take, Cliff. It is a quality take, you know. I would never tell Reese, nah, I thought that was a strike. <laughs> right? <laughs> Especially when he's mic right? That's what he's saying, man. You get, is that Mike hot? Yeah, oh, no, that was ball was down. <laughs> Wasn't even close. <laughs> oh, man. Were you into that, Cliff, when you reached base? Some of the first basemen, super talkative. Sean Casey's famous well, for that. We work with him a lot. I say, our colleague here, he talked about your, your you know, your brother, your sister, <laughs> your auntie, uh, your dog. I'm like, Case, I'm going to get picked off over here. That's what you broke. <laughs> but I didn't talk much over there first. You were locked in? Not, not really. I was just, you know, I mean, say what's up and then. You know, unless I knew the guy over there first. I mean, everyone, you know, who I like to talk to is like guys like Tony Gwynn, mm. the late Tony Gwynn. Like guys who, are, you know, may learn something from for a minute. Mark Grace was good. You know, I remember the guys. Big Cat Galarraga was good. You, know, you just chat with them about certain things. I played a little bit of first base. Maybe I look at their glove or something over there and see what type of glove they were using, whether it was a big one or, you know, one where you know they had, they had sure hands and, had the smaller gloves over there. It's just, just different conversations. Then every once in a while when I play the map, it's like, yo, where are you going after the game, bro? <laughs> Maybe we can link up. <laughs> Maybe your house, the MLB account <laughs> said, can you confirm that that was actually Cliff's backyard, please? <laughs> <laughs> Might not be a bad yes. time right now to go out and talk with Spencer Howard. This is really the first time we've seen him dance around the strike zone. Hey, new to the MLB Game of the Week for the 2021 campaign, the YouTube Player of the Game. Fans watching on mobile devices and computers, you can vote for which player will receive the cherished trophy during the post-game show. Stay tuned for the Player of the Game polling options. That'll come your way later. And also, of course, you help decide who the post-game interview is going to be. So far, leader of the pack has to be Reese Hoskins, or you could make a case for Spencer Howard as yeah. well if he continues. 
And on cue, not a bad time, but a good time to go out and talk to a young pitcher right now. First and second, nobody out. It's one of the beauties about the National League. I doubt the Marlins will be bunting here with Pablo Lopez on deck unless Don Mattingly decides that he may want to go to his bullpen early. Just have to really guard against if you're Spencer Howard right now, just laying that first pitch right in. Pretty good chance, Bernie, to see Joe Girardi has Suarez up in the bullpen. Has a reputation of being a big time strike thrower in that Phillies bullpen. Really have to concentrate right now if you're Spencer. Yeah. Making good pitch, strike one, think ground ball. Certainly you can't make anybody hit the ball where you'd like to, but whatever you feel like you could best be down in the strike zone to initiate some soft contact. John Birdie with two on. Nice stop by Marshawn. They love his defensive work. He's an excellent receiver already, a rookie. That was awesome. That's a pretty there. athletic move yes. right there to keep that ball from. That would have been really, if you're a Marlins fan, that would have been great. It would have been as good as a sacrifice bunt getting the runners over. Marshawn making his third start of the year. He caught Howard on Saturday. See, we're seeing the velocity drop and the control wavering. Yeah. Yeah, you could kind of see by his demeanor right now. He, he's he's moving around a little bit more on the mound, taking a little bit more in between in between pitches. You can see that 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 mind is starting to race quickly. He was in such attack mode through the first four innings, and now it's he's a little in, indecisive about what he wants to throw. Yeah. He needed that call. Now that yeah. could be a swing pitch right there to get him back in the strike zone. This ball appeared to be a little bit up and out of the zone. A friendly call to get back into the count. Jolly Olive Howard was absolutely cruising before this is getting dicey. This was the case on Saturday for Howard against the Red Sox in the third inning. We're in the fifth. They would love to see him get through it. There's a miss. Now if he walks birdie, do you go to Suarez? I think so. The way he, he he's really missing the strike zone, and he doesn't appear right now. He has command of the fastball as as good as he was through the first four innings. He really doesn't have the appearance right now, Scott, that he can land anything that he needs for a strike. The only strike in this bat was a fringe ball that was called a strike on a 2-0 count. Eight balls and six strikes this inning. Big payoff pitch coming up to eight hitter John Birdie. Leon and Diaz on. Three two misses up and in. Bats full of Marlins in the fifth. Not so sure about that pitch right there Cliff. You have a young pitcher that's struggling three two change up. He had just thrown a 3 1 fastball. Right. It was called for a strike and looks like Joe Girardi is going to Suarez. Yeah, I'm with you D. I, I just think when you when you have a guy struggling the easiest pitch for him right is, is to throw the fastball just do him for a strike. The, the, the feel of it must still be there. Um, and the confidence with the change of coming off the fingertips hasn't been there this this second. Four innings, two hits, no runs, but he's responsible for three Marlins on board. In comes Ranger Suarez. And the Phillies are one out away from winning the World Series, but the possible tying run is at second with two down. I remember hearing a little bit of the crowd. Most of the time he blocked that out, but that was a pretty special moment, and it was pretty loud. Just tried to let it all in, absorb the energy and electricity. He hits a slider, a slow bouncer up the first base side. It is foul. Brad's been perfect all year long, and you know he showed once again why he is perfect. He throws a devastating slider. Strike two. When he got him down to two strikes, that's when reality kind of set in. You know, it's like you know, we're one strike away. One strike away. I'm thinking to myself, just throw the best slider you've got. Brad Lid stretches. The 0 2 pitch. Jacob Mills struck him out. The Philadelphia Phillies are 2008 World 
champions of baseball. I sprinted as fast as I could. I don't even know if I ran that fast all year. When they went down to their knees, I told myself I'm taking them both out. You're watching the MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube presented by Glad You Asked, a YouTube original series that examines timely questions around the impact of systemic racism on our communities and in our daily lives. All episodes are available right now to watch on YouTube for free, no subscription required. Head over to YouTube and just search Glad You Asked, only on YouTube. Ah, another shot of Cliff's backyard. <laughs> you let the drone in, huh? Hey, man. Look, every once in a while, you got to do that. <clears throat> Scott Braun, Cliff Floyd, Dan Plesak, and Christina and Dina Cola at the ballpark. This is Ranger Suarez taking over, and he's been excellent this season, but this is not a fun spot for him. No, a base is loaded, nobody out. He hears him with a loaded strike throw, though. Philly signed him out of Venezuela. Would you be tempted at all as a manager to pinch hit this early in a game? No, I don't think so right now. It, it depends on Don Manley. He really wouldn't give us any hints on the condition of his bullpen since they've had to empty out the bullpen a couple of times in this series. I think they want to get some length out of Pablo Lopez. And the Phillies might be working with just a two man bench today. We don't know for sure, but McCutcheon out again. If there's such a thing as an ideal spot to be brought in as a reliever with the bases loaded, nobody out, this is it. Yeah. You have the lefty on lefty situation. Sorry, man. Mm. Jesus Aguilar sitting today could have been a pinch hitting option. I don't think I don't think they would go to Aguilar this early in the game. There you see him, he's getting ready. I would be surprised if they did that. Uh, Sierra's spot is next. So this could be a potential left left situation. Maybe Donnie baseball would like to take a shot at it. He may pitch in for Sierra. Lopez strikes out. That's a big first out for Ranger Suarez. I know is the pitcher. Actually yesterday pitcher Trevor Rogers pinch hit as they were saving up the bench because the is. Marlins are dealing with some injuries. Garrett Cooper is out even though he's not on the I.L. Hopefully day to day. Same with Jazz Chisholm who rolled his ankle and here comes the big man. Well, it's a spot right here for Suarez. He lives down at the bottom of the strike zone. You know, in vogue now is that high four seam fastball. That's really not his game. Moves the ball up, down, in, and out. This is where you really have to stay within yourself. One of the things that the big fella doesn't do all that well is run all that well. So if he can induce something hit on the ground, it could give the Phillies a chance to turn an ending inning double play and get out of trouble. The one thing he has done well, talking about Aguilar, has been an RBI machine for this Marlins team this year. 36 of them on the year. Yeah. Top three in the National League. Base is loaded. First pitch misses downstairs. You know, one of the reasons I think you look at the RBI leaders in the National League, pretty impressive. Aguilar with 36 runs bat in. Touch, Cliff touched on it earlier. Just a veteran presence that he and Duvall bring to this young Marlins team. And you better start taking this team serious. Mm -hmm. Their starting pitching is going to keep them around for a while. They're going to get Starlin Marte back off the injured list. And we're at the end of May, and they're only a game and a half out of first. Aguilar was a savvy pickup last year by Miami. He was a late bloomer, had a breakout 2018 with Milwaukee, 35 homers, 108 RBIs, and some serious damage with the bases loaded in his career, 371. A down 2019 bounced back last year for Miami. It's two and one. You can see Suarez being awful careful with the big fella here. What are the things if you talk to the Phillies people they like about Suarez he's not afraid of the big moment. He can change speeds move the ball in and out. He's not relying on one pitch has a really good change up that he'll mix in.
to the left side and that is a fair ball. Nope foul ball. Couldn't see the ump on the left side there. That's foul a pretty, ball. Good, pretty good pitch there too Scott a 2 1 change up. Had Aguilar out front if it weren't for just a little bit of a break it could have been a inning ending double play. Great instincts. <clears throat> Excuse me over there by Alec Baum. Just a word with that. Be able to just grab that ball, touch their base, and know who's running and sling that ball and not assume. You know, not 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 look back at the umpire, but just in a sense, just grab it, touch their base, and know exactly what it's going to do before that ball gets gets to him. You see him right here in the second. Step on third. Not try to go home, not try to do anything crazy. Get the ball home. Aguilar lifts it to center. And we'll see what that arm from Odubel Herrera looks like. Leon, not the fastest. It's cut off. Throw to third is in time. Run came across first. So the Marlins get one, and that will sit down the side. Still, Ranger Suarez enters this game. Base is loaded, nobody out, and allows just a run. Billy's defense Boy, this coming up a, big. This was a heads up play right here. One of the things that Oduba Herrera does really well, he keeps the ball in the middle of the diamond and hits the cutoff man. And Reese Hoskins does a great job of reading this and delivers a strike to Bowman third. Heads up play. Sack fly for Aguilar, but there's the out at third. One for the Marlins in the inning. They trail by a run on YouTube. As Riley shoots this one to right field, that's well hit. That ball is off the bricks. It bounces off of Lee. He then falls down. Ball came back and hit Lee right off the bricks out there. Went over to pick it up, and that's when his feet gave out. The one to one. Oh, Chris Conroy not looking. Huh? David Bode was trying to give him the heads up. Chris Conroy just didn't expect huh? it to come at him. Practice this in private. Just don't stress any of the ligaments that come up there with your fingers or anything. Oh, he's trying. He's been flipping it over, finishing the job. Got it. Oh, yeah. Off again, Tatis Hosmer strikes out, throw down there. And a stolen base. Oh, Keep the foot oh, up. And he did into a split. <laughs> Steal second, then go into a split. This is unbelievable. It's like the floor exercises in the Olympics. Boy, Reese Hoskins has been in front and center. This is a really good play defensively by the Phillies that we've talked about how their defense has let them down this year. Herrera does a great job of getting momentum. Reese Hoskins does an even better job of reading that this throw is offline. Cuts it in a heads up play. See him right now serving. He's taking a peek at the runner at third. He sees the situation. This ball is offline. He goes and gets it. Throws a strike to Bohm at third base. Heads up play. Nice job to get Isan Diaz and end the inning. The run did come across first, so the sack fly for pinch hitter Jesus Aguilar and then changes to the defensive setup for the Marlins. That one is struck to center. Newly put in center field. John Birdie from third out deep at the track to make the catch for out number one. Brad Miller gave that baseball a ride, so Birdie's in center. He was at third now. Isan Diaz moves over to the hot corner. And Diaz comes from second base where Jose Devers enters the game after a really solid day yesterday. The name sounds familiar. <laughs> Cousin, I believe, to Rafael Devers, the all world third baseman of the Red Sox. Jose Devers picked up from the New York Yankees in the Giancarlo Stanton trade and Jose keeps in very close touch with Rafael and the Marlins are heading up to Boston to take on the Red Sox. So Jose is going to be treated to some nice dinners up there. 
Yeah, here's the man of the hour, Reese Hoskins. How about his last at bat? Took a fastball up and in from Pablo Lopez, knocked him right on the seat of his pants. A couple of pitches later, and that bat hit a bomb to left field, and a great play to get the Phillies out of trouble there in the bottom of the fifth. Two strikes on Hoskins. He's mic'd up on YouTube. Jesus. God, that happens once a game. <laughs> yeah, dude! You know we had to beep out something. That's a first class turnaround that from the superstar awesome. production team that we have to give us the Reese Hoskins reaction after some chin music and then his 11th homer of the season back in the fourth. That was awesome. You know, it's been such an up and down season for the Phillies. They come into play two games under at 24 and 26. They've had some disappointments with the bullpen that really let them down in 26 in the 2020 season that 60 game abbreviated sprint. I really believe they were a playoff team last year, but the bullpen took them out of several games. And they've had some issues this year in the eighth and ninth inning. Give this team a lot of credit, though. They battled. I think one of the things we talked about early, Scott, they're going to have to clean up defensively. Last night, that uh, there was a double play that wasn't turned. It's hard to expect Brad Miller, who's not the everyday third baseman, ball that was hit the third it could have been a 5 4 3 double play that wasn't turned led to a big inning for the fish. Good take. <clears throat> Reese Hoskins a one out base runner. Yeah Philadelphia is 24 and 26 on the year currently sitting in fourth place. They, the Mets are leading the division right now and they had some disappointing news. Noah Syndergaard is going to have to be shut down for a few weeks. They were hoping to have him back. Francisco Lindor who they signed to that three hundred million dollar plus contract has gotten off to a rough start. Jacob DeGrom's had one start back. He was awfully good five innings. So this NL East is really shaping up to be quite a division down the stretch. The Mets have had the injury bug. The Braves have been hit with some injuries. The Phillies are going through that. The Marlins have had two. But Ooh. how about that play? That was smoked right to Lewin Diaz steps on the bag and they double up the Phillies to end the inning. Hey you get called up today you show off the glove work <laughs> first baseman of the future and now the present. Oh, he was ready to okay. think fast the old Adam ball right at him nothing Hoskins can do. Download the MLB app to get in-game video highlights, live pitch by pitch, breaking news, player updates, stat leaderboards, and more for your favorite team and the rest of the league. Gorgeous. That's South Florida. Just 
high scene like no other. <laughs> well, for you, you live there. Well, I mean, I don't see that area with you a lot. I uh, see it, you know what I mean? But I need to take you into my helicopter more often. <laughs> Next time I'm down there, okay? <laughs> Cliff, when you're there in November, December, January, and February, do you feel sorry for the people that are in the Midwest and Northeast? I can't lie to you. I do. I do. I mean, like, why are y'all up there? Come on down. I'm in. Don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> Miguel Rojas lives in Miami year round, loves this city, loves this team. Two hitter takes a strike. It's 0 and 2. Ranger Suarez back to work. Boy, you're talking about the Phillies. Through 50 games, they've seen a lot. They've had to go to that bullpen a lot. 17 one run games the Philadelphia Phillies have played through 50 games, and they're 9 and 8 in those 17 games. So Joe Girardi knows this one's probably going to be another one of those white knucklers. Uh oh. What is that? Yeah, oh. more and more. Zoom in. Okay. Oh, he's just chilling. Oh, he's just chilling. That's a great view. Very calm. Out I, there. I was thinking, Scott, you were taking this. That's a birdie. That's John Birdie out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Next half inning, okay? Birdie's playing center now for Miami. Hey, this Philly bullpen was so bad last year. I just have to play it straight like that. MLB worth 706, but it was the second highest reliever ERA in baseball history. And Scott, it becomes a thing. I made my living pitching out of the bullpen and what you really need. You need to have two guys. You need to have that ninth inning solidified. And somebody that can be your troubleshooter that you go to in the seventh or eighth inning with traffic, guys on base, somebody that can get the ball to their main guy. And that's going to get past Miller at second. So up the shoot, Miguel Rojas with a base hit to start the bottom of the sixth. It's what a lot of teams have gone through this year. Uh, multiple relievers. The Phillies aren't the only team that's having to go through that. And it's tough. Starting pitchers are going not as deep in the games. This one gets through two sets of legs. Right by Suarez and Miller. I just think the bullpen and everything else, when you talk about the defense and one run games, then they, it, they go hand in hand with the pressure of playing the defense and understanding that I can't make a mistake as opposed to just being free and playing the way that, you know, these guys know they can play. I mean, Didi Gregorius has six or seven errors this year, and you're like, that's not typical of him. So I think a lot of it, excuse me, is more of them putting the pressure on themselves, you know, to make the routine plays or, or as you mentioned last night about Brad Miller playing out of position because of injuries and so on and so forth, it leads to a lot of mishaps. Um, even that guy right there had a little run in with his manager this year, not in lineup today, Gene Segura. It's just a little too much for a team that's trying to con contend every single night, contend in a tough NL East division. You know, we talked a lot about the bullpens, and Joe Girardi has been known really in his days as a manager with the Yankees of handling and maneuvering a bullpen. What are the things the Phillies have that I think is going to benefit them in the long run? They have two quality starters. Zach Wheeler has been terrific and Aaron Nola. They can eat up some innings. So at least a couple of days, Joe Girardi and that staff, they feel confident they have two starting pitchers that can run them into the sixth, seventh, and possibly the eighth inning. And Zach Wheeler, I, I know a lot of people in baseball were surprised at the contract when the Phillies signed Zach Wheeler, but he's lived up to every bit of that contract. There's a look at two pretty good guys and Zach left them there on the far right. There's three really good pitchers back to back to back that the Phillies run out there. I think the bullpen eventually will take care of itself. This young guy we're watching right now, Suarez, he can move up in the pecking order. What a heads up play. Gets the lead runner at second with an excellent throw as he was backing up towards the line. That's about as good a play as you're going to see. And that's a tough play for a lefty because that ball is taking you away from the mound. You have to spin around and throw. Take a look at him right here. He's luckily he's falling off towards first base. He has a lower three-quarter arm angle that makes him a lot easier to make this play. Watch him get to it right here. And just a quick step throw and a great throw to Torres. Not an easy play. Does a jug. Good job of getting his body turned so he doesn't have to make a complete wheel around. Pretty nice play.
So now Dickerson's the base runner at first. Rojas erased. Cleanup hitter Adam Duvall. I think another thing what what puts Suarez into play too is his ability to throw multiple pitches. And he has that straight changeup. So if you're Joe Girardi, you're not afraid to run him out there in situations where he can face some right-handed hitters. More of a starting pitcher down in the minor league, so he'll throw the change up to righties. He has a ground ball pitch if he needs one. There's a good fastball at 94. With this three batter minimum now, you very rarely are you going to see left handed specialists throughout baseball anymore. Bringing a guy in, you're going to have to leave him out there for multiple hitters. This was a great spot for Girardi to bring Suarez in. He's able to get Lopez with the bases loaded in the last inning. Sack flying an inning inning double play in that pop up, but really great job for Joe Girardi, the way he's matched up this young lefty so far this afternoon. Small sample size, but Duval two for four with a homer against the Phillies reliever. We just saw a nice change up from Suarez. Opposing batters are 0 for 15 with five K's against that pitch entering today. Good pitch. That's a really a good pitch that sets up that straight change up that fastball in. Make Duvall aware of the ball in and try to get that bad head out. Similar to at bat against Jesus Aguilar through Aguilar a really good. 2 1 change up to get back in that at bat on that foul ball that went over the third baseline. Next pitch was hit for the sack fly. There it is. He pulls the string. Cliff, really yeah. good changeup. What set that up was that 93 fastball that was in the previous pitch. If you're involved, you have to think, okay, I have to make myself aware of that fastball in. There isn't a hitter alive that wants to get beat on a heater inside. Really good changeup there. Two outs, one on for Miami. Let's finish up with our last poll question before the YouTube player of the game poll cue. Which player has the most swagger in the game right now? Mm. Jazz Chisholm's on the list. He's got to be on list. the list. Tough Rolled his ankle, list. so he's not playing today. Oh, this he's is day to day. One. This is Fernando he's Tatis. In. Yeah. Oh, this is Tatis. How about that bling with that that uh, big necklace that they wear after he hit a big home run the other day? <laughs> that necklace with the Padres logo that spins around. That's brand new. That's the king of bling right there. It is some bling, D. I, you know what? I think Manny Machado. Well, they both got three, over 300 million. But I think when you look at Tatis, yeah, he's bringing it. But Jazz Chisholm, I don't know if you guys have seen the swag this kid brings to the table every night. It's different. He's right there. That's a good list. So they all they all rocking the Cuban links. He has about three or four. Of them. He looks like Mr. T every once in a while when he's rocking his. But um, some swag going on in this game. I, you, you, you guys know I love it. The swag chain is what you're talking about, by the way, Dan. It's brand new. Yonder Alonzo, I work with now at MLB Network. We all do. And he told me about it. It made it was made by Gabriel the jeweler, who made the turnover chain for oh, the University yeah. of Miami Hurricanes defense. And it was Manny Machado's idea, and Padres give it to a player who homers or if there's a player of the game. Right. So let me ask you, Bronny, you think the the one that UM has is CZs, but you think the one that Manny got is real diamonds? I think they're both real now. Eh. No, I, I I received unofficial word on, you can do on that the price. Couch. Okay, I'm not. I can't share it. Apparently, I was not given <sighs> from my source permission. Oh, I'll tell you what, if it's, you, if if it's, it's not real, cheese. that thing better be locked up. I'll tell you that. <laughs> it's not cheap. <laughs> Ranger Suarez, priceless in the sixth. Strands a runner, keeps this a one run edge for the Phillies.
drive, right center field, and it is gone! A grand slam, Isan Diaz! Isan has found that stroke. I could not be happier for this young man. Smokes oh. this one in the left field, around the corner. Anything in the gap really would give Anderson the advantage. Payoff pitch coming. This will fly ball out to deep left center field. Gary Cooper is the hero today. And some Marlins walk off winner. We've been talking swagger the entire break between innings. Ronald Acuna's got it. Fernando Tatis hey, Jr. Hey. There it is. It is right there. That thing's real. Javi Baez with the no-look tag. Well, his swag comes from his, his, his J's he wears, his spikes. Jazz is pretty dope as far as just, you see that right there? That's, that's the Cuban thing. Got the little, you know, Euro step going when he hits a bomb. But I'm telling you. And we've been talking about this. The one in Diego, I didn't question if it wasn't real diamonds. I'm talking about that. <laughs> that, that is canary diamonds in there. That's a lot going on, and that's real. I mean, you got $600 million on the left side, $640 million on the left side of, of, of the uh, diamond as far as Manny, you know, Manny Machado and, and Tatis. But I'm saying the one in, the one in Miami, Scotty, if you're saying that's real, I, that's a little iffy because that's college. That's what all I was saying. Probably a booster that it sets that up. Christina knows the school well in the area. What do you think, Christina? Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, you know, if anyone's going to know Swagger, it's you and me because you invented it. <laughs> Roller to Devers, yeah. who retires Bone. Yeah. But yeah, so in terms of Jazz, he's got the blue hair. He earlier in the season said, warned us, I might add, that there ain't a swaggier team than the Marlins. Right. And he reiterated that this past weekend when they wore their City Connect Series uniform, which were selling like hotcakes. <laughs> yeah, those, those uniforms were awesome. And I've heard Jazz say, my biggest fear, ready for this, is not making the Hall of Fame. Mm. He's a rookie. He's got confidence. He's got style. I'm sure Marlins fans are weighing in. The poll is up right now. So let us know your thoughts. Give it a click for very solid options, very swaggy options. Yeah, this should be really close. I'll tell you what, Cliff, he has some bling, but he also can hit a heater. I think he's the only guy in the big leagues this year. He's hit two 100-mile-an-hour fastballs out. Took it. Jacob DeGrom in the upper deck at City Field, and Jose Alvarado of the Phillies took a heater up by his eyeballs. It was over 100. Yeah. I think he's the only player ever to hit two 100 mile an hour pitches over the wall. Look at Jazz among rookies. He's been a stud and he's missed some time too. He's been on the injured list and now he's been out the last couple games. Rolled the ankle on the bases and then at bat as well. Three pitches. Matt Joyce is put away by Pablo Lopez who looks like he's picking up steam. There was that great changeup. Terrific pitcher Pablo Lopez. He's really pitched very well. Unfortunately he's on the short end of this one right now as the Fightings lead this one two to one in the seventh. That's dirty right there. Ooh. That's a special pitch. He uses it more every year in the bigs. 35% of the time this season. And there's some heat to Ronald Torres. through this batter. 
Dan, you might as well let him go pitch the eighth, too. This stuff looks better than ever right now. He's really crisp. We've seen the fastball in the mid 90s. Great changeup. That was the slider right there. You see the spray chart of Torres, second base on. That's why the Marlins one defender on the right side there. And that's weak contact. Ground balls. That's what Lopez does. Ground balls. Strikeouts on the changeup. Man, he is rolling again. Marlins looking for some offense against the Phillies bullpen. Let's stretch. I missed out. Man, well, yeah, what's up with that? The, the fake gestures over here. What is going on right now? Oh! oh but he's right in the face. Ah, right to the kisser. Just wanted to say, you know, my, I, I love. I love my wife. I love my wife. Very Can't wait for Mother's Day. Ah! All right, it's raining. Looks like we gotta go in. Say at two o'clock. No rain. <laughs> I think I got him, Coach. Come on. Who thought of a little fence right there? That was stupid. The yellow line needs to be below that. Below that, and it should be the homer, yeah. I wanna love you every day and every night. We did look back on the fire. Step up to the plate, compete online, and crush dingers in MLB Home Run Derby. Download on the App Store and Google Play for free today. I want to play as Cliff Floyd in that game. Odds courtesy of BetMGM. Oh, Total runs. Yeah, I got you, Cliff. Six and a half. Hey, this is a 2-1 contest. Pablo Lopez pitches so well in this park. And Spencer Howard was good, and once he lost it a little bit, Ranger Suarez to the rescue for the Phillies, and that's why the under's looking strong. Two scoreless innings so far as we're throwing the ball. Terrific. Good fastball, straight changeup. Joe Girardi did a masterful job of matching him up, bringing him in the game. Pablo Lopez, Aguilar, kind of a right-left, right-left situation. I guess that's it for Pablo Lopez. Based on the eye test. There's hugs coming, I promise. There you go. At least a handshake. He probably wants one more. <laughs> I mean, he's like, did you see me in the seventh? That's my best inning. Dylan Floro was warming before. Leon to center. That's hanging up for Herrera. Long run. He's there. Great closing speed right there, Cliff Floyd. We saw last night he robbed a home run, hit over his head, and straight away center field. It looks like he's slowly but surely rounding back in the form, not only with the back clip, but some closing ground here. Yeah, you see that concentration right there, Dan, and that's him just getting a good jump, understanding where he's at, and knowing that that ball cannot drop. When these games are close like that, you can ill afford to have any base runners. So, good job by Luke. He absolutely robbed Isan Diaz yesterday. A potential game tying homer in the sixth inning. He climbed that tall center field wall, timed it perfectly. Two free tickets today for Diaz. Solid contact the other way, and oh. that hangs up long enough for Quinn. Great closing speed again. A center fielder playing left, and it pays off. Well, that's one of the things when you have speed, speed kills. Quinn does a great job reading this right off the bat. Fortunately, when you have a left-on-left -left situation, he's playing a little bit more shallow. Yeah. 
this he sells out for right here. It can be a little bit of a risky play if this ball gets by. It's at least two and probably three, as well as Diaz runs, but a great play, and Suarez loves it. Biggest difference between the Phillies today and yesterday, and for much of the season, defense. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing, those two plays right there, you can't teach instincts. Both, both those plays were instinctive decisions made off the jump. And knowing you have to make those plays, or like Dan said, that's a triple. And, and, and men on third with a, with a chance to tie this game up. Outs above average, another stat to measure defense. Phillies at the bottom, but they have some solid gloves in the outfield. It's been more on the infield side. Alec Bohm struggling at third, and Joe Girardi even told us you got to separate the slumping at the plate with your defensive play. Well, you do, Scotty, but I think also it's not from lack of work. And, and with Alec, it's one of those things where, you know, you run into the sophomore slump if you, you know, if you want to look at it that way or whatever. But for me, it's, you know what? Pay attention to detail, understanding that you got to, you know, the ball's coming to me, anticipate the ball coming to you, all those little things. But the work is first. And if you're putting in the work, then as Joe alluded to in our, you know, in our meetings, like, hey, sometimes you have to just live with the mistakes. Boy, what a job so far by Ranger Suarez. He's gone two and two thirds. We're going to have to. He's not the Ranger. He's going to be the lieutenant after this one, right? <laughs> Promote the man. <laughs> hey, let me take you back in case you missed yesterday's catch from Odubel Herrera. Diaz was kind of robbed just now, but this was full on home run robbery, Cliff. Glove over the wall, and that's yep. a tall wall. That's a tall wall, and look where he's at to make that play. It's it's getting back almost like, we, you know, we do comps in this building. Devon White, D, you know Devon White. You, you've seen him in action. He, he he used to run to the spot. To make that play, you have to get to that spot. Outstanding. Teray is to the right spot on the ground ball, and Ranger Suarez, you are officially promoted. Is he lieutenant? He is the lieutenant. Like location, like you're in the middle of Little Havana. Everywhere you go in Miami, there's somebody playing a game, there's somebody playing catch. I mean, it is in our blood. It, culture is, is riddled with baseball stories and moments. <laughs> the Marlins are part of man. It meets culture, it meets pride in, in, in our city and all the players and the team. Last year, Jumps. historic lecture. This year, we're here to make some noise. On the mound, they're lighting it up. We got the speed, too. And we definitely got the power. This team is built different. The hustle, the motivation, it's internal. But they don't need me to tell you, they'll show you. Access exclusive behind the scenes content on the Miami Marlins YouTube channel. Visit youtube.com slash Marlins to follow the team today. Oh, no traffic today. That's nice. Cruising through Miami. Which player has the most swagger in the game right now? And your yeah. winner, Fernando Tatis Jr. Acuna in second, Jazz finishing in third. He's just a rookie. He's starting to make a national name for himself, and Baez clocks in the fourth spot. Makes uh, sense. I mean, no? yeah. 
it's, it's he needs to build it up. I mean, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. new that to the part. party. Absolutely. I'm just saying that's you know, bias there a little bit more love. I'm sorry. It was a tough poll question. Yeah, it was, but Baez is he's toning down a little bit as far as the chains and all that stuff, but he's still swaggy, man. Yeah. Stark Raving Sports in the live game commentary said, would also like to nominate Williams as to Dio for the swag poll. <laughs> La Tortuga, one of Dan's favorites. La Tortuga, hey, we're talk, talking about that. We've got a new pitcher, Dylan Floro, in for the Marlins. Boy, what a job by Pablo Lopez. Seven innings, four hits, two runs, one walk, and five punch outs. 92 pitches, 61 for strikes, 18 for 25 first pitch strikes. So it's up to Dylan Floro to keep the Phillies at bay. And a strike. To start off the eighth, that's Rafael Marchand. Base hit in the third. Not to put the kibosh on Floros yet to allow a home run this season and only allowed one run all of 2021 in 24 and a third innings. So a couple of things you want to do coming out of the bullpen. You want to limit the walks and keep the ball in the ballpark, and he's done a great job of both. Christina, it seems like the Marlins bullpen is really settling itself into some nice roles at this point. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Yeah, exactly. So when Kim Ang took over as general manager, she made it her offseason priority to upgrade the bullpen. The club knew they were going to play a lot of close games, as we've seen in 2000, uh, 2021. And Dylan Flora was one of those big additions. And so since Anthony Bass was taken out of the closers role and Yumi Garcia took over on April 10th, the bullpen has the fifth best ERA in the majors at 304. NL team ERA leaders, thanks, Christina. This season, the Marlins on the board in the National League. And I think a lot of that, too, as I see it, is roles are defined. And Don Manley has Garcia closing out game. I think he has nine saves on the season. Floor has been great. And so everybody understands their roles down there and every once in a while things get you know thrown around but for the most part these guys know when to get ready and, and then I know you can speak to how huge that is. Marshawn on a Whoa. hop and a hot shot gets past Devers in the right field and the ball skips away. Marshawn heading to second and he'll wait there. So two miscues although that was tough to handle for Devers but then Trouble in the outfield turns into an extra base. You know, and that bird is still there on the ground. Take a look at this, Scott. This ball gets by at second base, and it's rolling that gap in right center field. And that pigeon that's on the field decided to still. He's going to hang out right field. Here you see the bat hop. Hmm. You're you see not the lying. Pigeon he's right still there. there. Oh, he didn't move. He didn't move. You'll get a good look at him right here. Ball starts rolling right towards him, and he's like, nah, I'm not moving. I paid for this seat. <laughs> That's amazing. So base hit, and then E9 on Duval. Unfazed. Ice. It's hanging around there. Uh, Either somebody, right fielder with the sunflower seed, you can see him. He's waiting around for the next half inning. Get a fresh batch of sun bat sunflower seeds. <laughs> Phillies are going to try to turn this into some some insurance. Gene Segura, your pinch hitter. It's either Adam Duvall or Matt Joyce, the two right fielders, helping that birdie out there in right field. Yeah, and Duvall on the Marlins side has been statistically one of the best defenders in the sport this year. Here's Mean Gene. Well, if you're Joe count. Girardi, sorry, Scott, if you're Joe Girardi, this, this game, this is, is about a well managed game. You have an ideal spot, you just have Suarez who pitched three terrific innings. You have a man on second, and you have a guy like Segura on the bench, it makes it easy. You're going to go ahead and change pitchers. That pitcher slot comes up. There's a look at Bird in the birdie. <laughs> <laughs> you get two for one. On a Thursday in Miami. Oh, look out. Segura avoids it. 
A ball and two strikes. The fireball review in the live, the live game commentary with a note that the pigeons are out of control. It's bad enough what they do to our cars. <laughs> True story. Segura hitting 318 this year on the NL leaderboard. Marshawn in scoring position, and Gene fouls it back. Dylan Floro, one of the additions to this Marlins bullpen that's coming up big lately. You know, a lot of teams in baseball, the Marlins, both these teams, the Marlins Phillies, they can attest to it. You go through a lot of arms during a season. And nobody in baseball really knew what to expect after a 60-game season in 2021. There were virtually no minor leagues, so you really don't have a handle on what your depth chart is going to be. I think it's a concern of every general manager. Look at Gene Segura turn that one around. Rips it foul. That's a big concern, and I think every manager every day, they wake up and they wonder about not only their starting pitching, but the bullpen, the depth. We've seen teams have to go to the bullpen, two, three relievers every night. It's going to be survival of the fittest. Can you develop some fresh arms? Can you sign fresh arms? Bullpenning, part of baseball in 2021. Yeah, and protecting this rotation as well. Then as far as the youth of it, um, getting a guy back who threw his first bullpen today in Sixto Sanchez, as you mentioned in the opening, and, and, and that is key uh, for Kim Ang and just, un, you know, and Don Manley and just understanding, you know, how, how many starts are you going to get from Trevor, Trevor Rogers? How many starts are you going to get from Pablo? Are they going to, you know, um, with, with last year being what it was, you have to protect these guys from themselves. You, you, you have to look at, um, you know, upgrading your bullpen. Maybe Sixto is that sort of um, deadline acquisition that you get um, as far as getting back into the rotation and helping some of these other guys and, and, and maybe skipping a start or two for these youngsters. But the bullpen in itself has been terrific. Just a routine day off out of the starting lineup today for Gene Segura. He played quite a bit lately. It's a great at bat. Just got yeah. It. You know, getting back talking about bullpens. Best record of baseball, the San Diego Padres at 32 and 18. Guess what? Their bullpen is tops in ERA in all of baseball. Other couple of really good bullpens. The Cleveland Indians, six, five games over 500, and the Cubs. Craig Kimbrell's back. Boy, the Cubs bullpen deep right now. Chafin's throwing the ball really well. Tapera throwing the ball really well. Remember a name, Ryan T Keegan Thompson. He's throwing the ball really well out of the bullpen. On the ground to third. And Diaz puts away Segura for out number one. New to the MLB Game of the Week this season, the YouTube Player of the Game. So if you're watching on a mobile device or a computer, you're going to vote for which player will receive this trophy during the post-game show. We'll have the poll options coming soon on YouTube. And if you've caught any of our broadcasts from earlier this season, the players love the trophy. They try to press the button. I don't know what it does, but I do know that the name gets engraved on the trophy. And Dan, a regular season is 162 games except for last year. This is a way to break things up, and, and players are super competitive. They're loving the trophy. It is, and we're not really supposed to influence the voters. <laughs> but we can. be able to pick that on YouTube, but I'm going to make, I'm going to cast my vote a little early for the lieutenant if this holds up, Ranger Suarez. Wow. So no Hoskins, no Howard. You're going Suarez. Bases loaded, nobody out. Inherited three runs, only one scores, three scoreless innings. What was your well, position you know, when going, you played I'm going then? Hoskins. What was your position? What did you? What was your position in Major League Baseball? Reliever. I, I'm, yeah, I'm biased. I'm, listen, I'm not going <laughs> to make you like, where are you going? For it. I expect I'm going anywhere else. But, I, but I'll tell you this: if you have a bad bullpen, it sticks out like a sore thumb. And I think if you're a fan of the Phillies or a fan of it. Team that has struggled with a bullpen, it seems like every other team in baseball has a good bullpen but yours. And it's tough in a, in a day and age where you're running two and three and four relievers out there. You know, in a perfect world, you think, hell, oh, we have the lead. Let's just run four different guys out there. It's really hard on a night 
to run four guys, particularly in one and two run games that are all on. You know, in a perfect world, and say, hey, well, I'm going to go the matchups in my seventh inning and eighth inning guys. Doesn't always work out that way. Nice pitch. No, it's a good choice. And we'll let fans vote pretty soon. Yeah, MLB account saying, of course, please that going for the reliever, but Suarez was bringing it today. There he is. He's not the Ranger, he's the lieutenant. <laughs> And Cliff, you're picking early too with well, Hoskins. I'm just throwing one out there, but I, I got a little something different later. Okay. Appealed to the third base um, Quinn did not go around, according to Sam Holbrook. So we have a full count to Roman Quinn. Marshawn still stationed at second base. Quinn hitless in three trips so far today. And he doesn't bite. So now two on for the Phillies. And this makeover brought to you by new baseball of operations head, Dave Dombrowski. And, and I do believe in time. Archie Bradley missed some time, and I think he's going to be a big part of that bullpen. Jose Alvarez, when he's throwing strikes and he's down to the zone, He's as difficult to hit as anybody in baseball. Eventually, I think you're going to see this bullpen settle down. I know there's a good look at Archie Bradley. How about that thing right there, Cliff? I don't even know if I if I would five years if I could grow something like that. Will said. Oh man. Strike bottom of the zone to Brad Miller. Now, Archie Bradley's a fun personality too. Look at the line for Miller this year as a Philly 309. Five homers. He's been hot lately. We might see Jose Alvarado for the Phillies. He's heating up. Miller in the air. And Dickerson camps under it. Both runners retreat. Well, I made a case for Ranger Suarez for the YouTube player of the game, but this guy walking up right now can change that in one swing. It's pretty much been the Reese Hoskins show. Hit a big home run after getting knocked down in his second at bat. Made a great play on a Fly ball to center field for an inning inning double play and a good gun down of a runner trying to go from second to third. Base hit right here and Scott I might have to change my thinking for the YouTube player of the game. <laughs> they actually changed the play to lead off this eighth inning. Rafael Marchand on second now gets a double instead of the single and the E9 so no error charged against Duval. I think the birdie was helping to make a case out there in right center. Hey, just give him the double. <laughs> Whatever you say, Birdie. Not John. I, mean, I put double down and then I changed it, but see, that's not what's going for card, man. Sorry. Hoskins in the fourth stat cast powered by Google Cloud go long and he knew it as soon as he hit it. Wow this ball is torched 106.5 exit velo. Projected distance 403 feet Boy, that have to feel awfully good after getting knocked down your wallet a couple of pitches before that and you see his boys behind him in the dugout showing mad love. I liked the approach from the Phillies bench too, including Bryce Harper. They let him cool down for a couple minutes and then they were like, okay, so tell me about that experience. That goes away and both runners move up. It gets past Leon.
This is a breaking ball here from Flora. Just mm -hmm. the owners. I'm not sure how this would be scored. My gut feeling tells me this might be a pass ball unless he was crossed up. I'm not sure if he was trying to frame that one. That ball is really a pitch that normally he handles that pitch right there. Pass ball. Do you give Hoskins the base, or I guess you got two strikes? No, you him. can't with her. No. You have the lefty Odubel Herrera That's coming right. up next. They've crowded Hoskins. They're trying to throw that two seam fastball in. They've gone fastball in, breaking ball away. On the ground, and it's handled by Diaz to put away Reese Hoskins and sit down the side. So the Marlins bullpen doing its job, and now it's up to the offense. 2 1, mid eight. Jim Leland has waited through 34 seasons in professional baseball for this. Trailing 2 1 as his team comes up for its last licks in game seven. In the bottom of the ninth, it was rookie Craig Council who came through in the clutch. Game seven of the World Series is tied. Then Florida would load the bases in the bottom of the 11th. Leland's first World Championship was 90 feet away. It'll be up to Devon White. When Devo came up, I'm thinking to myself, this one, you know, one out bases loaded. Devo hit a sack fly. We're world champions, you know. And then he grounded out to second. And so I'm looking back at my card and I'm looking ahead. I said, you know, you're always trying to think ahead. I said, well, I'm in a bind here. I had Alex Arias left on the bench. That was the only player I had left. Only one game seven in World Series history has gone longer than this. I was panicking a little bit, to be honest with you. Renneria bats with two out. And a breaking ball is in there. In the first pitch I see the Edgar strike, and so now I'm starting to look again, and the next pitch I look up, boom, the World Series is over. A liner off Maggie's glove into center field. The Florida Marlins have won the World Series. Google Cloud is helping to power StatCast with massive amounts of data points to reveal new insights taking you deeper into the game than ever before. Google Cloud is the official cloud technology of Major League Baseball and StatCast powered by Google Cloud is showing us not one but two home runs off a hundred plus from Jazz Chisholm. The well first this is why they call him the Jazz Man. This is upper tank off of Jacob DeGrom. How about this expected HR distance 402 feet Cliff this looks like 502 feet to me <laughs> then he takes Elvarado deep at the bank this was ultra was impressive yeah 95 miles an hour on the exit velo that was by his eyes too, speaking huh? of Alvarado he's going to come in and piggyback off of Suarez who was terrific three scoreless innings and the Phillies going to turn it over to a guy that can bring some noise from the left side you look at the ERA of 3.38 fine 3 and 0 one loss record but boy this guy can bring it with some movement 98 to 101 miles an hour with nasty movement he's a nightmare for lefties if he's throwing strikes he's nearly impossible to elevate the ball off of good fastball slider combination if the Phillies are going to stay relevant the rest of the year this bullpen is going to have to pick it up and this is one of the main guys Alvarado helping bridge that gap to get the ball to Neris in the ninth inning. Nick Maton at second base now on the double switch. Brad Miller was at second base to start the game. So he takes the seat. Pitcher spot is now the number two hole. Eighth inning action on YouTube. Jorge Alfaro, the pinch hitter. There's 100. Oof. That's tough, Sonera. You're, you're you know, waiting around for opportunity maybe to pinch in. This is the guy you get on 100. I don't care if you're from the left side. Boy, you couldn't ask for the lineup to be situated any better if you're Joe Girardi. Both the moves he's made brought Suarez in at an opportune time where. Marlins elected to keep Pablo Lopez in the game. 
big strikeout and a sack fly from Jesus Alfaro. Part of the order here, you're getting a guy that hasn't hit a home run all year. Light up situated pretty well, 9 1 and 2. Yeah, just returned this week from the injured list, a strained hamstring, and that's 100. Didn't do much with it. Nathan newly into the game at second, makes the play, and Alfaro heads back to the bench. You know, this guy's the closest thing, Cliff, that we've seen to Zach Britton, who's now pitching with the Yankees. So go back to Britton's days when he was throwing bullets for the Orioles, big power sinker. This guy throws harder than Britton. His breaking ball at times is a little bit better, too. You wonder how he could have an ERA of three with the stuff that you see. Powerhouse fastball, Cliff, a big heavy fastball, too. I think that's the biggest thing for me, D, is the, 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 the heavy fastball he throws. It's almost for a hitter when you're walking up, you're thinking, do I move up in the box towards him? No, he throws 100, so I have to stay back. Uh, and that heavy ball sort of induces a lot of ground balls that we just saw right there with Alfaro. You know, we touched about two things that kill you in the bullpen. Home runs and walks as walks has been one of the main issues for Alvarado. 46 walks in a little over 55 innings last couple of seasons. So when he's throwing strikes, he's nearly impossible. But when the roof starts to fall in on him a little bit, it's almost self-induced with the base on balls. This is Jose Devers. Oh. And now a ball in the strike. And Christina, I know the Marlins are about to head up to Boston. That means family time, right? Indeed, Scott. So Jose Devers, 21-year-old rookie, the number eight prospect in Miami system, will be reuniting with his older cousin. I think you guys may have heard of him, Rafael Devers, third baseman for the Red Sox, this weekend when the Marlins begin a three-city trip. Rafael Devers has a famous homer off 100 plus as well. Raldis Chapman, his rookie year, lefty on lefty crime. And Devers has been one of the better hitters in baseball since he debuted. Talking about Rafael. Jose, a different style. Good bat to ball skills. We saw that yesterday in the eighth inning on a pitch at 97 up and away, acquired in the Stanton trade in 2017. Devers is also lightning fast. He had a big day yesterday, Cliff. And you and I were talking before the game. How would you feel if you weren't in the starting nine after what you just did yesterday? Young guy. That's what they do nowadays, but 3 2 coming up. I wouldn't be happy. I'll tell you that. I mean, that's that's the game, though, is getting these guys to buy into the philosophy of what they're preaching from an organizational standpoint. And, and you know, when, when you have a good day, it doesn't mean you're playing tomorrow. It just means you had a good day today. So I guess it works. I don't know. I, I, me personally, I got going. I got going to the office and holler at them <laughs> a little bit. Hey, did you see what I did with 97? <laughs> Up and away. Big knock in the eighth. And that missed. Now he sets the table for the Marlins with one out in the bottom of the eighth. Reese Hoskins and Miguel Rojas had a little conversation, and we take you inside. Who did your shoes? So this uh, this company, Stadium Custom Kids. Okay, yeah, yeah, really yep. good job. Love that. They're loud, but they're cool. Uh, is, that, is that cool that you mic up and you hit a homer? Yeah, that's cool. I might have said a couple bad words along the way, but sorry, Dad. <laughs> we dubbed it though, Reese. It's all good. You didn't say anything wrong. Now he's going to want to be mic'd up every day. And if you're Joe Girardi, that last base on balls is kind of a what's been indicative of El Barado during his career. He's nasty when he's throwing strikes. You get a situation you'd like if you're Girardi, you have Devers up there, really not much pop, but one thing he could do is run. And Alvarado unfortunately walks him. And if you're Joe Girardi, you just kind of just have to bear with this one. It kind of comes with Alvarado. The consistency and the command, it comes and goes. Oh. 
He finds the zone. Rojas asking about it. What makes it difficult at, at times too, Scotty, when you're lefty on lefty, he doesn't face a lot of lefties normally because of how nasty he is. So he's probably more comfortable pacing right handers with that sinker hard slider combination. Sometimes when you don't face a lot of lefties, your depth perception, where they stand in the batter's box, you're more comfortable facing righties because you face more righties than you do lefties. Yeah, Devers can move. Alvarado keeping an eye on him. This can be a, a very tricky balance as a reliever. You want to pay attention to Devers over at first, but you also have to be worried about Rojas swinging a big stick. I've often felt like you have to make your mind up when you come set. You're either going to first and you're going to try to make a throw or you're going to home plate. You don't want to get caught in that area where you're indecisive. You're reading the base runner and dictating whether you're going to deliver the ball to the plate or not. I think you have to have your mind made up. OK I'm delivering the hook to home. You'd be quicker to home. If he gets a good jump he gets a good jump. So Dan holding the ball it throws you off as far as just having that rhythm. It does and, and, and it it really varies Cliff from pitcher to pitcher. You can see he doesn't seem like he minds holding the ball. Base runners this season against Jose Alvarado or in his career are eight for eight in the stolen base department. Yeah, so a couple of things you can do to stop the running game. You can vary your holds and looks and one of the other keys is getting ahead strike one. We don't see as many pitch outs during baseball right now. You're certainly if you're Girardi you're not going to pitch out right here on a two one count. Cliff, that's why hitting is so tough. You have a guy that can't really find the strike zone and he drops a 2 1 slider on you. Man, I'm telling you, effectively, wow, I hated those guys, man. You throw one down 100, then the next one you get that over, you're like, really? So if you're Rojas right now, you're thinking, wait a minute, he just flipped up a 2 1 breaking ball for a strike. But always in the back of your mind, you're guarding against that 100 mile an hour bowling ball sinker that he throws. He'd love a ground ball here hit sharply. Rojas sticks with it. Hey COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. Join the team and get the vaccine to help get us all get back to doing what we love together. Visit MLB.com slash COVID-19 resources for more information. Garrett Cooper on deck. That's a great sign. For Marlins fans he was a late scratch about 20 minutes before yesterday's game with right oblique tightness and we spoke to Don Mattingly this morning who told us he wasn't in the lineup but said we'll see how he looks today and clearly he's doing OK. Here comes the sinker. Spiked it good stop by Marshawn he's so smooth back there. Yeah, Joe Girardi told us before the game his his catching skills and catch and throw. He, he's very advanced for a young player. They think he's going to have a bright future. Maybe stuck behind JT Ramuta does a great job there. A backhand on a 99 mile an hour. Let's call it a 55 foot sinker from Alvarado. <laughs> you can have that catch and stuff. Yeah. We just saw the big man JT Real Muto still on the injured list. DD on the IL, JT, Bryce, McCutcheon out again today. Payoff pitch missed. Two on for the Marlins in the eighth. And here comes Garrett Cooper on a 10 game hit streak 444 during that span including this walk off blast on May 22nd five days ago against the Mets. Nothing better right there I'm telling you when you got that little hop and put the 305 up and let's go home boys. 
know it's a global audience, so 305, that's the area code well, down in the area. Yeah, if I have to tell you that, then my bad. I'm just helping everyone yeah, out yeah. besides the Marlins fans. True you know, bad. Philly's defense right now, they can't help Mr. Alvarado. He can't help himself. That's his 15th walk in 16 in the third inning so far this year. Uh, it's become a problem. This part of the order very favorable, and he's running himself now into some dicey water. It's never been a question about the stuff. It's been a question about harnessing that stuff. We've seen him have the ability to flip up a 2-1 breaking ball for a strike. That sinker that he has is so good, but the inability to command that sinker is making it really tough. Cooper has been having some fun in the season series against Philly pitching. Swings through 100. I know Philly fans, it, it, it can be awful frustrating that you can throw first pitch strike for 100, and then the ball just starts dancing all over the strike zone. Might be one of those guys you're better off just sitting down the middle plate and just say, hey, bring it to him, because nothing he throws is straight. Check over to first back pick oh. attempt that he got him. What a play by the rookie Rafael Marchand and it looks like Miguel Rojas might have hurt one yeah. of his fingers there on the slide attempt back. Mm. Sneaky move by the Phillies catcher. We'll see if Rojas is OK. Oh, oh man. No. no. Boy, this is a great play and a great tag by Reese Hoskins. He lets the ball travel in this swipe tag, and I think that's what got Rojas. Ouch. What a terrific throw by Marshawn, a la St. Louis Cardinals backstop right there, right? Looks like Mr. I, Molina. Yeah, it is. Yep. Nice. Yachty loves the back pick. So does Wilson Contreras of the Cubs. Another look at it right here. Look at the quick feet to catch and throw. A great job by Hoskins to get himself in a position to throw that tag down. And it looks like the left hand of Rojas. Pointer finger. Dislocation. Yeah, we saw an injury like that to Marcelo Zuna the other day. We hope Rojas is okay. Ah. You know, when you're struggling to score runs, Cliff, like the Marlins are, just a little bit too frisky at first base with Reese Hoskins playing off the base, Rojas yeah. trying to get a little extra real estate. More than likely think if a ball's hitting the gap, he wants to score from first. A little antsy, and, you know, that's that's coming from a guy who was a catcher for his career, and Joe Girardi, the manager for the Phillies, saying, look, let's put it on right now. Reese Hoskins continues to build his case for the YouTube player of the game. That's right. It's a big play to get rid of one runner. Devers on second, though, representing the potential tying run, and he can fly. Cooper takes the pitch. Oh, that's a close a pitch. Great take, though. When coming off the bench, that's just so tough. He missed a pitch prior to that. Fastball way is a little upset with himself, and that right there is just a good take. And this is the last thing you want if you if you the Phillies is a guy getting in the boxes, getting comfortable in that bat. I'm not sure how comfortable he is throwing that back foot slider down at end clip, but this might <laughs> not be a bad time to try to just bury this breaking ball down at the back leg. Cooper on the ground yeah. through the right side. Devers rounding third, and he will score and tie the game at two. Garrett Cooper off the bench comes through for the Marlins. Might be a case of just one too many fastballs. I know that's his bread and butter pitch, but that ball didn't have much sink on it, Cliff. They were looking for something down in the zone. It almost appeared like a four-seam fastball. Here's another look at it. See this ball just kind of tracks middle-middle. A great job of hitting, not trying to pull that pitch by Cooper. You see that hole vacated on the right side. Phillies bullpen 
continuing to struggle and Alvarado with the walks as we touched on 15 walks and 16 in the third eventually comes back to bite him again. Just like last night a two out rally from the Marlins in the eighth inning. And credit Cooper just the swing the, the swing he took prior to, to that base hit. Now I know he, I know it was a pitch in between that where he took but he fouled off a ball it was sort of a big hacking was like I'm not going to I'm not going to get you know get my time in coming off the bench. Let me shorten up and gets rewarded with a knock RBI to tie this game. That's off to him. It would be first and third if Marshawn didn't hook up Hoskins with this baseball. Yeah, this is going to be another one, depending on how this thing ends up. If you're Joe Girardi, talk about frustration. You get a big play by your catcher, Marshawn, on the pickoff of Rojas. You're feeling pretty good. You have a two strike count on Cooper. Inability to make pitches when it counts. Duvall's had some clutch hits for this team. Third in the NL in RBIs with 33 on the season. 2 1. Now 3 and 1. He's just too good on the mound for me to, 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 to be all around and be this wild. His stuff is so good, Dan. It's, it's tough to watch when you have this type of stuff and you yeah. struggle to not. Be able to throw strikes. It, and it makes it tough as a manager, too, Cliff, because you're not sure do you go out and get him? Do you leave him out there? Do you let him fight through it, get out of his own way? Well, that's the third free pass issued by Jose Alvarado in the eighth. 16 walks and 16 in the third. Joe Girardi going to have to go to that bullpen against Brockton up. You really couldn't have planned this out any better if you're the Phillies. To start this bottom of the eighth inning, it was nine, one, and two. Very favorable matchups. You go back and you, you I, I go back to that walk of Devers. You have a left on left situation, a guy that really he was going to have a difficult time putting the ball in play. You walk him, you walk Rojas. Self inflicted. Look at the bullpen well, this you, series. You won't win a series that way. Mm -mm. Absolutely not. Nine Ernie's. Marlins trying to take three out of four here in Miami. Putting a lid on this series. Lewin Diaz just called up today. Nick Nider to the injured list with right biceps inflammation. And right down Broadway from Alvarado. First start of 2021 for Diaz. Cooper had the big knock to tie up the game. And then a walk to Duvall. He's going right at him. Let's we'll see if Diaz can shorten that swing up like Cooper did here, because that was too big of a hack. 100. Left on left. Also, they're working Alvarado. Season high, 30th pitch coming up. His career high is 34 in 2017. Well, see, Dan, I just don't understand that pitch call right there. As far as selection, I should say, as far as just you threw two fastballs, one 99, the second one 99, you get a swing and miss. Guy's late, and then you say, I'm going to try to trick him. With the off speed pitch. No, I'm with you, Cliff. It, it, it's just the inability to command the strike zone. And, and that's been a problem for Alvarado. Love the arm. Not he, enough of those. Diaz gone fishing, but the fish pick up the run they need in the eighth to even up the score at two in Miami. That is nice.
Whoa. Pink stripes, I like it. Oh, I need a pair of shoes for this. Sugar Kings, huh? Miami. You know, that's what we need. Swaggy, different colors. And San Leo. Let's go. Wow. Pinstripe old school. Let's go. Alvaro Sugar King This is why I say we're the swaggiest team in the league for real You can access exclusive behind-the-scenes content on the Philadelphia Phillies YouTube channel. Visit youtube.com slash phillies to follow the team today. Well, this is it to Cooper right here. The pitch sequence from Alvarado. Powerhouse heater at 100. He backs it up with another good fastball at 98. He runs another, looked like a cutter up at 94. Then center cut, he was lucky to get away with that one. Up in the strike zone, another 199. And then this is a bullet that he hits with that vacated hole. You can see Cooper loves it. Not an easy thing to do to hit a ball off Alvarado. Quiet April, big May, especially against the Phillies. Garrett Cooper is in right field. And Adam Duvall is going to move to center. He can play all three for the Marlins this year. We'll go through the rest of the changes for the Marlins defense in just a moment. That's Amy a Garcia lot. is in the game. Yeah, there are quite a few changes. Man. We're not at the park, but we'll get them for you soon. 1-3-1 ERA for Yimi. He's been inserted to the closer role, and not just him, but the entire Marlins bullpen has clicked even more so since that move was made. Picked up the save last night. Quick rest, probably maybe five, six hours. You hit the pillow, and you're back <laughs> at the park. Yeah. Every once in a while, I just sleep at the park. Did you actually? Every once in a while, I mean, you're talking about noon start, Scotty. Mm -hmm. It's a sense of going to the house. I agree. Good food. As long as it wasn't, you know, anything, any rodents or anything, <laughs> you know. It's a pretty new park here in Miami. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good there. Yeah, it's, it's great. Good. Where do you sleep, though? It didn't matter. Let's find a spot. Yeah, couch. Odubel Herrera is in the cleanup spot for the second time in his career. He doubled back in the fourth and later scored on a sack fly. See if the Marlins bullpen has a shutdown inning after a key run in the eighth. Fresh ball game in the ninth. Wondering right here if Joe Girardi will give Herrera the green light. You'd like to see him get on. This guy could run a little bit. Good part of the order coming up. Herrera, Bohm, and Matt Joyce. Quick, what do you do? Do you let him swing? Well, the I way he's swinging the bat today, yes. Oh, you took it. This guy has a pretty good idea of the strike zone when he's swinging well. There's your defense now. Birdie back to third. Devers at short. Diaz and Diaz on the right side. Good left field. Jorge Alfaro. <laughs> it's a pretty nasty pitch. I still think, Cliff, that's the best pitch in baseball. 95 miles an hour. Knee high on the corner. There's not a lot you could do with that one. Little counterproductive, though, to the way that the Marlins defensively are playing. If Herrera can hit that ball to the left side, there's a lot of real estate there, and particularly in the outfield. 
and a left fielder that doesn't know left field too well. That one is struck solidly to right field, and it is off of Cooper's glove. Herrera is heading for three, and on his horse and in there. Head first slide with a leadoff triple in the ninth. Odubel Herrera powers up, big ballpark, holds it, but he ends up at third. Center field has been a problem for the Phillies, but Odubel Herrera slowly but surely rounding himself back into form. He takes this 3-2 cutter. You can see him trying to cut this ball in on him. Wow. Keeps his hands in and comes within a few feet of hitting this one out of the ballpark. Right here, he doesn't even pick up the third base coach, Cliff. He's just reading that one, and he makes it easy. And well, that's what you talk to do, then. I, that, that in itself is your decision as a base runner. You see where the ball is. You see what happens to the right field in that situation. And once you make that decision, there's no reason to look at the third base coach. Look up, slow down a little bit. You know, it sort of throws you off. He said, look, I'm making a decision. I'm getting the third base, and good base runner. Wow, Dubo Herrera right there. And a young hitter. But he knows how to drive in a run. Alec Bohm. 452 last year with runners in scoring position was best in baseball. You know, so hard to do at times, Cliff, as a young hitter, you come out in a spot like this, you get a little bit over anxious. You have the count in your favor there, 1 and 0, and swings at a breaking ball way off the plate. Pretty good pitch by there, Garcia. Throws the 1 0 breaking ball way off the plate and he gets Bohm to chase it. Right. Doubles up with a nice 96 mile hour fastball in on the fist. That's what happens when you're young. You, you swing at that pitch away. Now you're thinking, well, now I have to be a little bit more reserved and, and you're more tentative. Well, that was a high. Well, if you're Garcia, by that reading right there, that that, that swing's going to tell me, Cliff, I think it's time to go back to that breaking ball <laughs> down and away. And he was right on that 96 mile an hour heater. He's not most, sure what's going through Garcia's mind right now, but that might have been the last heater that Bohm's going to see for me in a while. He goes 44 percent with the four seamer, otherwise mostly slider change up. That's another fastball. Or make that curveball is his third most used pitch, then the changeup. Seeing more variety this year from Yimmy Garcia with the Arsenal. As you touched on earlier, Cliff, this guy's been really good. Nine for ten in save ops. He's been throwing the ball really well. Only 14 walks, too, to go with yeah. the 20 and two thirds. That's the key. He was awesome last year, too. What good, good eye take. right there. Good take. That is a tremendous take. After you've chased yeah. a 1 0 breaking ball away, you get the count back a little bit. You're digging yourself back into a good, favorable count. Do you waste one more pitch or you go after him? By that take right there, I'm the probably go back with that fastball inside. Tell you what, this is where you have to tip a cap clip to a young hitter. Bohm chased the one pitch out of the zone, but boy, he has really reeled it back in. This is a terrific at bat. Yeah, he's doubted it. And you know, when you think about Baum and ways that in his career, he's gotten that guy in from third base or less than two outs 68% of the time, fellas, and league average is around 50% 50, 50 that shows you his eye with guys in scoring position is really good as he strikes out, obviously, when we give him love. Garcia goes right after him and picks up the punch out. That was really a backup cutter, middle middle. Might have been just a change of speeds from Garcia. This is a good pitch to hit. This is intended to be down and away, and it's center cut. He kind of gets on the side of this breaking ball. Just a little bit out front, it's bomb. You can see right here the yeah. bat head out, out front. One gone. Here's the veteran, uh, Matt Joyce. They're putting them on. Yeah, they won't deal with him. Torres is on deck, and Torres is 0 for 3. Joyce takes first base. Intentional walk. 
Double play depth from the infield. Ninth inning action, one out. Marlins tied up this game in the bottom of the eighth. Uh, from a guy that's pitched the ninth inning, it's guys like Torres at times that are the most difficult to get. Guys that aren't looking to do a whole lot of damage, just want to put the ball in play, good things happen. You get guys up there that are swinging, have big long swings, they're trying to do damage. Sometimes they're easy to navigate around. You can go breaking balls down and away, fastballs up and in. Guys like Torres just trying to put the ball in play. He's a good fundamental baseball player, and you never know, maybe a squeeze attempt here. No, it's a comebacker to the pitcher. He turns around and gets one at second, and oh. they don't turn it. The run scores, and the Phillies grab the lead. I want to see that one again. I'm not sure where Garcia didn't go home with that first, right? That would have been uh. an easy one, two, three double play. This is going to be bang, bang. I think the Marlins might want to take another yeah, look at it. It was really close. Of course you're going to challenge ninth inning. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, put them on. Yeah. I thought he was out. This is a replay that could decide the game. Garcia turns around, goes to second for the force. Herrera scurries home and scores. And we want to know if the throw to first was in time to get to Reyes. What was the play there, Dan? Do you hold the ball and look back the runner well, for a you second know, and go with, to with first? With a young pitcher right here. This ball is hit. This is one hopper right back to the mound. This would have been a perfect home to first double play. You like to have a little bit of communication. Mm. Safe at first, run scores. Well, there was no force at home, and Herrera kind of waited. Yeah, he did. Let's see. They see. Ooh, that is close, oh. right? Yeah. Let's see this thing. Safe. He beats it. Yep. yep. Yeah, you're right, Scott. I thought they were literally it was first and third. And Herrera waited for the throw. Great job by Torres. You know, it's real easy to do that when you hit one like that. You drop your head and you're disgusted. But boy, he did a great job hustling. It's that leadoff triple. For Herrera, Phillies back in business. Fielder's choice, RBI to Reyes. And that leads us to Marshawn. That's just great hustle. See the boys on the bench are ecstatic up on him. And Hector Nair is swarming for Philadelphia. Their closer with a one run lead here in the ninth. Shot at Herrera at third base. He was quite a bit down the line. You could only get off third as far as the third baseman was playing. And Garcia made that play, and I think he had his mind up that he was going to turn two. It might have been better off just checking and trying to make a shot at Herrera at third base. It looked like he had to play at third. Yeah, catch him in a rundown. Torres has decent speed, and there's your strikeout for Garcia. But Odubel Herrera starts off the ninth with a triple. He's electric. He scores on the fielder's choice, and the Phillies have the lead back as we head to the bottom of the ninth in South Florida. All zeros. Eight no-hit innings for Halliday at his first postseason start. In the air, Chase Udley. Nothing is routine at this point. Udley makes a catch. One gone. Two outs away from a no-hitter in game one of the division series. He's not been a doctor tonight. He's been a surgeon. Over is Valdez with room. Two outs. The Reds last hope Brandon Phillips. 
And one more piece to the puzzle for Roy Halladay. Just about a quarter to eight, October the 6th, 2010, the first postseason game for Roy Halladay. He winds the 0-2, swing and a dribbler out in front of the plate. I feel like it hit Brandon Phillips' bat a couple different times. My first thought is there's no way we're getting them out. There's no way we're getting them out. The ball's going to hit the bat, and it's, you know, what something's going to happen, screwy. I, I was I was panicking a little bit in that play because it was like, no hitter. If I don't make this play, you know, it's over. Ruiz out to get it. The throw from his knees. It's in time, and it's a no-hitter. Unbelievable. And the Phillies celebrate around Roy Halladay. Back in South Florida, StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud gives us a great look at Lone Depot Park. It is spacious. Odubel Herrera in the ninth, powers up to right field, and it would have been a home run at Citizens Bank Park, but not in this big ball yard. You know what, though? Take that trip. Yeah, it scored the Go ahead run for the Phillies and now Hector Neris is coming in to try and shut the door. Oh, and, and he's been pretty good. Uh, eight for ten in save ops on the year. Goody Array at 2.08. This is another guy. Powerhouse splitter. Good fastball to go along with it. Phillies bullpen has been a little bit of great, a little bit not so good. Suarez was terrific. Three scoreless, no walks, three punch outs. Alvarado not so much. Three walks. Gave up a run there in the eighth inning to tie things. Turn it over to Neris. He's their guy. Phillies are going to have to find somebody that can bridge the gap to get the ball to Neris. Maybe it's the new lieutenant, Ranger Suarez. Maybe see Ranger Suarez in a starting rotation. That's true. At a ballpark near you in Philadelphia. I think this guy has the heat getting back to Suarez. Three really good pitches, low heartbeat, commands the strike zone. Lots to like about Suarez. First pitch, Leon swinging, and it's a foul ball. Phillies having Reese Hoskins guarding the line there, that no doubles defense. Mm -hmm. Those are change of thought. Some teams like to do that, some teams don't. With a guy like Leon, who doesn't run all that well, that ball's fair for sure. That's two bases. Phillies have done a lot of things right defensively this afternoon. That's his primary pitch, that splitter. It, it is, and it's so good at times. It reminds me a little bit of former closer Brad Lidge. You look at it, and Brad Lidge had more of a slider that looked like a split finger, but this guy's ball, he can he can make it appear to go down and away. It's, at times, it'll go down and in, and there's the straight down one at 83 miles an hour. The key is he throws hard enough, too, if he can get strike one, expand that strike zone a little bit. Hitters are six for 43 against the splitter this year. It's a 140 batting clip. You know, once again for the Phillies, the, the part of the batting order is coming up that you'd like to see. You've got six, seven, eight, nine. So it, re it really hasn't been the middle of the order that had caused the bullpen some issues. Suarez was terrific. You know, with all the talk the last couple of days on the Cardinals and Mike Schell and, and everything that's going on, uh, guy who yesterday got had to have his hat taken away. Look in there, it's his hat, DP. I'm just saying, with all the stuff that's going on in the game, there's a lot of attention paid to the bill of these guys' hats and, and what they're wearing. And. What Mike was saying yesterday was basically if you're going to police his guys, then you have to police the whole squad because that's how his his players had looked. The one that was confiscated by Joe West yesterday in St. Louis. He wasn't fooling anyone there. Payoff. Oh, that's dirty. No. Oh. Mm. 
Ball four. Sande Leon is going to lead off the Marlins ninth with a walk. That's the seventh walk for the Phillies this afternoon. And boy, this is a close pitch. Maybe catches the corner. This fastball just off the plate. Marshawn tries to good, do a good job of framing it, bringing it back into the strike zone. Had some issues in the eighth inning. Alvarado walk three. Certainly, if you're Joe Girardi, the last thing you want is a leadoff walk, but that's what they're dealt with. Home plate umpire Mike Malinsky said, no, sir. And on that one, he calls a strike. <laughs> Similar width there. I mean, it's a tough job. It is a tough job. And look, by no means will I ever want to be an umpire and call balls and strikes. That's just the, you know, the back and forth that you hear from players about strike zones and how they change from a bat to a bat. And, and it's tough to sort of know what the strike zone is and expect your guys as managers to know the strike zone consistently. Leon on Diaz 0 1. Now it'll be 0 2. Diaz has put together some quality at bats. I know the batting line's not there, but last week or so, even today, a couple walks. And then a ball sent to left field that was run down by Roman Quinn, who is not your average left fielder in the speed department. He can really move. And, and that was where, if you're nearest, you don't want to dance around. If you can in this at bat, initiate some contact or a swing and a miss. Was able to get ahead right away early. The more pitchers that they see, the better off the chance of putting the ball in play. There's a good split. Yeah, he got him. I know it's frustrating as a Phillies fan at home. You're wondering, you see the stuff from Alvarado and Neris. You, you're just wondering why you, you could get the two strikes and not put hitters away. And this is a nasty split. You can see that tumble action. Yeah, but that's that's just trusting your catcher and, and Marchant and knowing that you can call that pitch and not let it get past you and have a guy at second base uh, with a pass ball. So that's that's a good call by the by the youngster behind the dish. It's important. To have an excellent catcher for Hector Neris in the ninth. John Birdie, left side. Boom, trying to make it two. And they do. Game over. Billy's take it 3 2 and grab a couple games in a four game series. They split the series. Neris gets the ground ball he needs after the strikeout. Well, a lot has been talked about the Phillies defensively all year. They've been very subpar, but this might have been the best defensive game they played all year. A couple of nifty plays in the outfield. Roman Quinn made a couple of really nice plays. Reese Hoskins on a cutoff there and a nice 5 4 3 double play turned by Bohm. Another look at it here. Just tries to beat this fastball into the ground at a good turn. And a nice pick by Reese Hoskins. Bohm does a good job of getting rid of it quick. Yeah. Maton with a good turn and a nice scoop at first. Reese Hoskins made that look awful easy. Birdie can fly. That's a nice play. And that's one of the themes for you, the Phillies defense. But you have to actually pick an individual. For the YouTube player of the game, Spencer Howard, Ranger Suarez, Reese Hoskins, or Odubel Herrera. We'll go over it in the post game show. Hit it. The post game show is presented by Glad You Asked. And what a good one today on YouTube. A global stage watching Reese Hoskins in the Philadelphia Phillies. There's D.D. Gregorius who should be back soon for Philadelphia. They pick up a W. 3-2. They've got quite a few superstars down at the moment. Bryce Harper, J.T. Real Muto. But a win for the Phillies. They split the series against the Marlins in Miami. And let's bring in Reese Hoskins with the home run. He was mic'd up today, and he joins us live on YouTube. Reese, congratulations on the W. And first off, before everything, what was it like to have the mic today? <laughs> yeah, it's a big win for us. I appreciate you, Scott. Um, yeah, it was fun, man. You know, anytime, anytime we could do something cool like that on the field, it kind of gives the fans 
a little bit of the players' perspective while we're while we're out there playing. Um, all for it. Hey, racing Stan, I thought you know the home run is obvious. I thought it was a great play, great instincts on that cutoff. You read that that ball was offline. You made an aggressive play to third. I thought that was a difference in the game. Yeah, totally right. They had um, they had bases loaded with nobody out or one out. Um, kind of had the makings of a big inning going, but um, the the runner at second base kind of gave himself up, and that kind of stops the inning, right? We we keep the score two one, um, and. and you know, the, the game went on from there. It's a big inning. Hey, Reese Cliff here, man. Hey, um, just you've been more vocal. I'm mean, seeing you more vocal. Um, talked to you a couple years ago, obviously, and you, you know, a little quiet, but you know, you put an emphasis on on being more vocal, and making sure your boys know you you're there. Yeah, a little bit, Cliff. Look, I think you guys were talking about some of the injuries that we've had. Um, sometimes people got to step up and get into situations that maybe they didn't find themselves in. Um, earlier, so you know, with with some of these guys that we consider leaders down, mm -hmm. um, it's time for people to step up. And you know, if that means me being a little bit more vocal in order to get this team some, a couple more W's, I'm all for it. Hey, Reese, how about the job Ranger Suarez did today? He was terrific. Yeah, huge. I'm glad you touched on that, Dan. Um, you know, a couple a couple big innings in the middle of the game there to kind of get to the back end of the bullpen. You know, we've it's a four game set. Anytime you have those. Some of those bullpen arms can get tired, so um, took Ranger to come in and just continue to get ground ball, ground ball, soft contact, um, keep those guys off balance, keep the score two one was huge for us and gave us a chance to win at the end of the game. Let's not bury the lead either. You received some chin music, and then you decided, <laughs> I'm gonna homer in the fourth <laughs> inning. It goes a long way. Take us through that entire experience. <laughs> well, you know, guys are throwing hard now. Um, and anytime you see something up there, it kind of wakes you up a little bit. The 12 o'clock game is a little bit earlier than we're used to, so by you know by that time I had no choice but to be awake. Um, but I don't know if it, it kind of gets the adrenaline a little bit um, going a little bit more. I don't know if it made me a little bit more locked in, but I took some good pitches and you know finally got a pitch in the zone at the end and put a good swing on it. Didn't miss it. A lot of talk has been about the defense recent, you know, the lack of at times and this and that. But today. It seemed like everybody was ready for this 12 o'clock game because defense was all over the place in helping you guys win this game. Yeah, we made some big plays. Um, I know Millsy made a nice play earlier in the game. Um, you know, we talked about the cutoff a little bit. Marshawn with the back pick, you know, he was all over that. He and I locked eyes and he called that. Um, and that's a big spot in the game. We had a pitcher that was kind of kind of struggling to mm -hmm. throw some strikes. He thought maybe we could steal an out. And, and, and we caught we caught Rojas sleeping a little bit. Um, you know, that, that obviously they got the hit to tie the game, but if we don't get that out to make it two outs, who knows what happens the rest of the inning. So, um, yeah, we were on our toes. We made some defensive plays, obviously the big double play at the end, and got the win. Reese, congrats on the W. Great job in this series and in this one today. And thanks again for the microphone and taking, taking us inside. It was awesome. Yeah, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. I right. also see I got this little uh, YouTube thing. That's pretty cool. Hey, there it is. <laughs> Hold it up for us. The YouTube player of the game. There you go, Big Doubt. So, Reese, you that guys. is going to come with your name on it, too, as we'll show the poll results in just a moment. But, yeah, break things up during the regular season. Add a little hardware to the room, right? Yeah, it never hurts, right? No, exactly. <laughs> All right, take that with you. Safe travels. Congrats on the W. We'll talk soon. Sounds good, guys. Appreciate you guys having me on. Bye. Thank you. Reese Hoskins, great job. And there it is. Trophy coming in hot at the end. You yeah, I did all I could game. for the lieutenant. I really was pulling for <laughs> Ranger Suarez. He was terrific. <laughs> Listen, there were a lot of positives of this Phillies win. The defense, which had been a problem all year, airtight defense. Suarez was terrific. I thought this was a well-played game by the Phillies. Yeah, what do you think, Cliff? Well, you know, first and foremost, the Odubo Herrera. I mean, you talk about a guy, and we talked about him the whole game. Dan alluded to him getting back into the flow of things. Um, but special in the series as far as defense, today swung the bat extremely well, got the third base, uh, and scored the winning run. So when you look at this Phillies team, I mean, you expect a lot of them. And when, when you have some guys beat up a little bit, guys have to step up, and they're doing that. 
I liked that question, too, to Reese. You're like, hey, you're becoming more vocal. And I think we're also seeing it even with his play. I mean, yeah. the other day he hits the home run. That was the difference for the Phillies. He really provided the two big shots in the series for Philadelphia. And the other day he was like, let's go. And this time he didn't even need to say much. I mean, a pitch almost hit him yeah. towards his face. And then he responds right away. So you're right. His answer to you, too, had a little bit of oomph to it. Like, hey, there's guys out. Big guys that are huge presences in our clubhouse, so others need to step up, and it's time. Well, there's more, you know, than just um, showing up and playing a baseball game. There's accountability uh, amongst, you know, everybody in that clubhouse to come in, and you have to be comfortable in that role to, you know, to speak up and so on and so forth. But there's accountability for guys like Reese. He's a leader. Um, he plays the game the right way. He worked. It's really hard to be really good. Talked to him a couple of years ago years ago before all this COVID stuff, and he was really amped up about, you know, being that guy. And, and to see him on the field when a guy makes a great play, uh, to stay there and show love is him, you know, just maturing and understanding how big he is for this team if they're going to do anything in the tough NL East. Uh, he earned that trophy, and we gave it to him just in time there with the results coming in. Reese Hoskins, your YouTube player of the game. Sports Gaming Universe in the live game commentary said, I'm voting for the pigeon for MVP, <laughs> but he is not an option. That guy is. <laughs> Well, this had to feel awful good. A couple of pitches before that swing right here. Reese Hoskins took a fastball up and in right underneath the chin, and he's singling to the fellas out in the bullpen. Let's do it. And let's win it. That's what he did. 48% of the pie, your player of the game. You made your case. He came close. At this least the second third. place. Yeah, the third lieutenant, place. Ranger Suarez. And you weren't the only one. The Philadelphia Phillies channel said, if the Phillies win this one, give Ranger Suarez the player of the game award. Oh, okay. What a job he did. But Hoskins takes it. Also had the nice play with Marshawn setting him up with the back pick to erase one of the Marlins runners. 48% of the vote. Reese Hoskins custom trophy from YouTube coming your way. And the Phillies will be heading back up north with a W. 3-2, they take it over the Marlins. More on the postgame show coming up. All zeros. Eight no-hit innings for Halliday at his first postseason start. In the air, Chase Udley. Nothing is routine at this point. Udley makes a catch. One gone. Two outs away from a no-hitter in game one of the division series. He's not been a doctor tonight. He's been a surgeon. Over is Valdez with room. Two outs. The Reds' last hope, Brandon Phillips. And one more piece to the puzzle for Roy Halladay. Just about a quarter to eight, October the 6th, 2010, the first postseason game for Roy Halladay. He winds the 0-2, swing and a dribbler out in front of the plate. I feel like it hit Brandon Phillips' bat a couple different times. My first thought is there's no way we're getting them out. There's no way we're getting them out. The ball's going to hit the bat, and it's, you know, what something's going to happen, screw I, I was I was panicking a little bit in that play because it was like no hitter. If I don't make this play, you know, it's over. Ruiz out to get it. The throw from his knees. It's in time, and it's a no hitter. Unbelievable. And the Phillies celebrate around Roy Halladay. Back on the postgame show, presented by Glad You Asked. And this was a good one. 3-2, Phillies take it over the Marlins in South Florida. Fans can hit the water again for a gorgeous day, as usual, down in Miami. And we're going to view what went down this afternoon. First on the mound for the Marlins, it's the great Pablo Lopez. Uh, you know what? One of the things that sticks out, he has a tremendous changeup. We talked to manager Don Mattingly before the game, and he lo he likes the usage of the changeup. He just doesn't want him to fall in love with it. You take a look at his season, that fine ERA of 2.73. I think more importantly, you see the walks, the strikeouts is good. 3-2 on its way home. Right side, that's a fair ball. A hurry. Diaz tossing to Lopez, got him. Beat him by maybe a step. Roman Quinn never thinks he's out with that speed. <laughs> Quinn is out the box with Pablo is late to Dan's point. Man, that was really close. 
And the opposing pitcher on Philadelphia, Spencer Howard, making his second start of the season, coming off an interesting, I would say, weird outing on Saturday. Uh, he has, you know, his veal. He's, he's started out the game 95 to 97 miles an hour. Big, strong guy. Jandam going to be a tough play at short, and the throw is on time. Ronald Torres with a throw on the run for the out. You can see why right there, why the Phillies really like Spencer Howard. That's a good fastball and a guy that Rojas that can turn on the heater pretty good. This ball eats him up here. And now here comes Reese Hoskins. Uh oh, Reese Hoskins goes down. That one avoided him, but just barely. A close call, some chin music. You taught the turn away from that baseball just like that. Hoskins with a deep oh. drive. Left center, and he got it. That is the ultimate payback. Right there as he's saluting the fellas out in the bullpen. Gets knocked down two and two. Says, okay, doesn't give up that at bat. Gutsy at bat. Reese Hoskins muscles up for his 11th of the year. Eight of them on the road. And he breaks the ice for the Phillies. It's 1-0, his second of the series. And he hit that win with a little added motivation. Takes one up, up on the chin, knocks him down, and stays in and hangs in against a tough righty. Joyce sends one. Center. Sierra has it. That should be plenty deep enough. Herrera come on down. It's 2-0 Phillies on the sack fly from Matt Joyce. Leon and Diaz on. 3-2 misses up and in. Backs full of Marlins in the fifth. Looks like Joe Girardi's going to Suarez. This is Ranger Suarez taking over, and he's been excellent this season, but this is not a fun spot for him. No, base is loaded, nobody out. Lopez strikes out. That's a big first out for Ranger Suarez. And here comes the big man. This is where you really have to stay within yourself. The one thing he has done well, talking about Aguilar, has been an RBI machine. Aguilar lifts it to center. And we'll see what that arm from Odubel Herrera looks like. Leon, not the fastest. It's cut off. Throw to third is in time. Run came across first. So the Marlins get one, and that will sit down the side. Still, Ranger Suarez enters this game. Base is loaded. Nobody out and allows just a run. Okay, more Ranger Suarez in the sixth. This is your guy, Dan. He was really good. Three powerhouse innings. Gets the fielder's choice at second base. Another great straight changeup. Moved the ball up, down, in and out. Ultimate strike thrower. He was terrific. And he gets a little help in the seventh from his oh. buddy Roman Quinn. That's a great catch, man. Great instinct of catch. Ground ball. Look at Ranger Suarez go in the middle innings for the Phillies. He knows he came up big. And then in the eighth, Rafael Marchan picks mm. off Miguel Rojas. That's a veteran move. Uh, this is a big play and a great tag at Marchand. This is a play they locked eyes, some communication. Unfortunately, it looks like Rojas may have hurt himself on the play getting back. We'll get an update from Cristina Di Nicola on Rojas in just a moment. Alvarado looked like he might have escaped the jam. Nope, Garrett Cooper to the rescue. He really, so through. many things that went well for the Phillies. Only the eighth inning, Alvarez a little bit wild, three walks in an earned run. But Odubel Herrera, not enough to leave this big ballpark, but a triple, they'll take it, Cliff. You better believe it. He pulled those hands in nicely right there, Scotty. And a little stumble around second base, but he gets in third safely and shows some love to the boys on the bench saying, let's go to do this. Boy, and it's a game of inches, right? 90 feet away. This looks like the potential inning, inning double play. Torres does a great job being it out, bang, bang, and Oduba Herrera scores the go-ahead run. Hector Neri's time in the ninth. One out, one on. If double plays are your thing, you have to love this if you're the Phillies. Five, four, three, double play, just like that. There is saves that the Phillies split this four-game set. They do. The Phillies improved to 25 and 26 on the season. The Marlins dropped to 24 and 26 in that bunched-up NL East. Every team so tight, a division that is truly up for grabs. For the Marlins, they've dealt with quite a few injuries this week. No Jazz Chisholm again today, an ankle issue. Garrett Cooper was out of the lineup yesterday, comes up big in a pinch hit spot today. That's a good sign for the oblique. Let's throw it to Christina Di Nicola at the ballpark for an update on Miguel Rojas, who we just saw in the highlight, leave the game with the finger issue. Christina, is he okay? 
Thanks, Scott. So we just received word that Mikhail Rojas dislocated the index finger on his left hand, sliding back into first base on that play in the eighth. Uh, as you mentioned before, Josh Chisholm Jr. is sidelined. Garrett Cooper came in late to pinch hit. Third baseman Brian Anderson is on the injured list with a left shoulder subluxation. And he and Rojas are actually both Gold Glove Award finalists on that left side of the infield. As we saw later in the game, the Marlins had to do a lot of maneuvering. They moved John Birdie back to third. They put Jorge Alfaro out in left field. That was just his second time out in the outfield in his career. And a lot of moving parts and dominoes. It'll be interesting to see how the team can go on moving forward. This is their unofficial captain, so this would be a big loss if he has to miss some extended time. Back to you, Scott. Thank you, Christina. Great work today. And yes, Miguel Rojas, we hope to hear good news from the Marlins side tomorrow. 3-2, Phillies take it in gorgeous South Florida. Much more to do on the post-game show, presented by Glad You Asked. That was remarkable. And something like this is what they came for. Okay, I got a hot mic on. Heads hey, up. What's up? Hey, I got I got a mic. I got a mic. Got a mic on. <laughs> I'm a rubber. <laughs> uh, Odubel Herrera. Herrera. Well, since you're my dub, let's get the people's opinion. Am I one of the best looking relievers in the big leagues? Survey say? says. Yes. Ding 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 ding. We want to play. Two at Rogan. Suave, suave! Hi! Sandy, how are you, dude? I got a mic on, just to tell you. I got a mic on. I'm going to say cafe. 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 Buen picheo, niño, buen picheo! Nadie tiene más flow que Lewin ahí, papá. Mira. Lewin en la vaina. The first baseman, Lewin Diaz? Yeah. Did he just get called up? Yeah. This is his debut today. No, no, no. He was on. He got called up last week. Okay. He looks the part. He's got a little, a little bit of flow, but Lewin is looking good, man. Siempre. Sí, sí, Lewin. He got the vina, you know? Toe, oh, hell of a play, play, dude. Nice job. Hey, you want to say what's up to Chicken? Say what's up to Chicken? Not even here. Not here? He's got a. Next, next half inning. When he, next time he takes his hat off, take a look at his hair. Oye, hay que divertirse. 92, okay. Hey, how are you? Jesus. You got a hit too. God, that happens once a game. Yeah, dude. Bomo. Seeds are planted. It's got to water those seeds. Yep. Where to go? Barely get out. Not far Barely. Enough. Not, not far enough. Do you help? Just right over it. It's hard to tell. 
Look at Bryce. Not far enough. <laughs> Come on, Bryce. There was a homer. No, I think what he's saying is when a guy knocks it down, you want to hit it out of the ball. Uh, That's what uh, he's yes. referencing. Not that. far enough. Okay, see? Oh, man. A little player talk. That's the good stuff. I live for that stuff. Six game hit streak for Hoskins, seven for his last 19, three homers plus the microphone all day today, and props to Jesus Aguilar as well, hooking us up with some sweet sound on YouTube. Back on the post-game show, Scott Braun, Cliff Floyd, and Dan Plesak. So that's what it sounds like, huh, Cliff, on the field? Yeah, I guess. I, you know, it's, it's all new and, and different than, you know. But but Bryce saying that, I would have looked at him like, really, bro? Not far <laughs> enough? Wall scrapers are far enough, as long as it goes over and he doesn't catch it. That was the statement from Hoskins. Some statements from our curious creators today in the live game commentary section. Let's start with Cowboy Jeff. Great defense today by the Phillies. That's for sure, Dan. This team needs more days like today. You know what? That has really plagued the Phillies. They've had some inability in the eighth and ninth inning. Their bullpen has caused them some problems. But from beginning to end since the season started, Defense has been a problem, and I know the Phillies have worked on it, but the defense was airtight, particularly the outfield defense. A great cutoff, Reese Hoskins, reading a throw that's off the line, getting that runner at third base in a situation that was big. Big double play to end the game, 5-4-3 double play. One of the better games the Phillies have played defensively all year. Negative 29 defensive runs saved on the season. Entering today, I bet you that number improved. Roman Quinn out in left field. I mean, he's usually a center fielder clip, so yeah. it's nice to have him there. It really was. And he made, you know, that, that play right there was just, you know, all about instincts. And, and we talked about it and alluded to it during the broadcast is if he misses that ball, that's an easy triple running scoring position. But, uh, you know, I think Joe Girardi pushed the right buttons today. Yeah, he even pressed the correct button with some help from Mother Nature. Curious creator, Sports Gaming Universe was like, I'm voting for the pigeon for the YouTube player of the game. This pigeon was unfazed. And he was not budging. He, a, he was able to get into the ballpark. He was situated at gap in right center field, Scott, and he was not moving. Right here, we're getting a good look at him. Take a look at the top left part of your screen. You're now entering the bird sanctuary. <laughs> I don't think that was a pigeon either. I don't know what it is. We need some help, but it's an indoor bird that needs to be outside. That's Let's right. That way. <laughs> exactly. It's an indoor bird that was like, you know what? No fans in the stands last year. Oh, oh, I'm pumped, but now they're taking my seat. So I'm heading to the field. Yeah. Whoever was in right field, there was a good supply of sunflower seeds that were on the AstroTurf out there, and he was not moving. Best yeah. seat in the house. Yeah, and oh. we're about to hop to right field to grab some of those after the postgame show. This is a hungry crew, too. Scott Braun, Cliff Floyd in the box, Dan Plesak right next to me, and great job by Christina DiNicola today as well on the postgame show. As the Phillies take it 3-2 over the Marlins, we do this just about every week on YouTube. Let's set up the schedule. Next week, Wednesday, six days from now, the Mets visit the Diamondbacks, 340 Eastern first pitch. We'll have it exclusively on MLB's YouTube channel. And then the week after that, we do Dodgers Pirates. We'll have Shohei Otani and the Angels against the Tigers. The A's playing great baseball in the AL West, taking on Adolis Garcia and the Rangers. Mariners setting up with a matchup against the Blue Jays on the 30th. So much more to go on YouTube. Yes, I know. Production staff had to throw this in our face. There are injuries for this Mets team, but guess what? They're in first place in the division, just saying. And look at how many trades, let's call it, are going to be put in place for this team. They're going to trade players on the injured list for players currently on the roster and go much better the rest of the way. They are Taiwan Walker through uh, the other day uh, in, in an inter-squad game, looked very well, a simulated game. He threw the ball really well. This is a bunched-up division. Lots of problems with the Braves and the Mets with injuries. The Phillies need to get Bryce Harper back into the mix. As far as pitching goes, the Marlins, two and a half games back, they might be in better situation pitching-wise than anybody else in that division. Yeah, that's a young Marlins staff, and they have reinforcements on the way. Sixto Sanchez at some point, he threw his first bullpen session yesterday. Eliezer Hernandez is coming soon again for the Marlins. Also, Edward Cabrera is a top-10 right-handed pitching prospect in their system, so there's plenty of arms. We talked to Trevor Rogers today 
we've seen the work he's doing so far this year. He's nasty. He, he's thrown the ball really well. They're going to key is to get Rojas back into that lineup, had that finger looked at after the game. They can ill afford to have him out for a long period of time. This is a team, the Marlins, they have a tough time scoring some runs, but boy, can they pitch. you got to weather the storm this yes, year. I'm excited do. for the Mets, though, to see this team on YouTube next week. Yes, we did receive some tough news on the Mets side today. Noah Syndergaard coming back from Tommy John surgery, and they're going to shut him down for at least a few weeks, it sounds like, before he ramps things up again. So maybe at some point they get him. Maybe it's September baseball from Thor and the powerful fastball that he brings to the mix. But guess who they still have? Jacob DeGrom. We don't know who the pitcher is yet. It could be Jacob. And if it is, he is something else to watch. He's a stud. And you know what I think, you know, when you talk about weathering the storm, um, you know what, Scotty, you have to do that in this game. And next man up mentality uh, sometimes is enforced a little bit more than you, you would like. But at the end of the day, guys step up. And, and like you mentioned, they're in first place. They're in first place for a reason. They're playing some good baseball. Whoever's, you know, um, you know, getting an opportunity to play, you just got to get in there and do your thing. And um, when, when, when the other guys come back, then you know what, you figure it out. But um, you know, it's more. It's always more than the 25 man roster. We know that. We've seen a lot of baseball around here. Um, and when you look at this NL East, that's why, in my opinion, <clears throat> excuse me, it's so close. Because you know you have so many injuries and and managers trying to figure out who can who, who you can get five innings from and go to the bullpen and so on and so forth. But um, it's gonna be fun to watch this division. Mets bullpen has been very good. Edwin Diaz has been really good in safe situations. May has been really good. Their bullpen's holding up their end of the bargain. They get healthy. Look out! It could be hashtag LGM. That's right. They're in first place now. Look at what's coming back for that team. Hey, Cliff, you were awesome. Air high five. We're really close to each other. Boom. Did great. Hey, How head about back, go back to your back. Uh, let's go back there. there. Yeah. That's Cliff's spot. Everyone's invited. The Got MLB Game of the Week live on YouTube is back next week, June 2nd, a little more NL East. Mets matching up against NL West. Diamondbacks, 3 o'clock Eastern pregame show on MLB's YouTube channel. Come hang out with us again. For the big guys, Dan Plesak and Cliff Floyd, the great Christina Di Nicola down in Miami, and our entire superstar crew. I'm Scott Braun, logging out for now. See you next week for more baseball on YouTube.